in the I, military and I, dragging their name I have the a dark. reputation to ask tough questions and piss some people like you off. That's and my including reputation. Dead, including dead people who I'm going to stand oh, up for. Oh, trust me. We are standing up for them more than you are let's standing say, up for them. Let's see. You better my get back to that list because question, we're going to clear some people's my, names today. My question for you is, my question for you is, how is it that in the last 50 years, we don't have a single candidate... Everybody has their own. Hey, John F. K. was a playboy with Marilyn Monroe. Trump, Karen McDougal, Stormy Daniels. You know, George Bush linked to 9-11 and weapons of mass destruction. Bill Clinton linked to Arkansas women, all this others. Everybody has a reputation. How is it that the reputation that follows them as people close to them die? Why right. is that a story that people, many people believe in? Why is how, that? Are the Clintons in their 70s yet? If I, you don't think I can make a list of other people who are 70 something years old and say this person died, How come that they person haven't done died, that with Bush? Died. Hold on. How come they haven't done that with Bush? He's in the same, same I age. I have no freaking idea why they haven't How come they haven't done, done that with Trump? Say, but, so are you saying, so you agree with what How I'm saying? How come they haven't they, done that with Reagan? So, How come they haven't done that with Kerry? What point are you making about these men and women How who you listed? How is it so many people close to them die? How is it so many people, people close, close to, to them everybody has dies? How is are it you so suggesting? Many Okay. I'm asking the question. You're is what asking I'm doing. a bizarre question. Exactly. Did people die? You off. Did people die? No. What pisses me off, and I'm going to say what? this again because you, you apparently are not listening to me. You read a list yeah. of people off an obscure website that that that, that of, of conspiracy theory, taking a Venn diagram of everyone that ever worked in the orbit of someone who served in public life for 50 years. Good afternoon. Oh, that was, I didn't know Paul. I didn't know Paulie Shore. <laughs> was that angry about people dying? Why did Paulie Shore get so pissed off about this? Oh, uh, I thought I'd bring you a taste of home, uh, a nice what Brooklyn. What the hell was that all about? <laughs> uh, he just interviewed him. I think it was yesterday. Uh, or, that? Is or that today? Anthony Weiner? Yes, that's it. He's oh back. Oh my god, oh, he's back, <laughs> Eric. I have no idea. Anthony Weiner is back. Jesus, man, these people never die. He's a homie from Brooklyn. I thought you'd appreciate it. Yeah, he is a homie. I'm embarrassed to say so. He was a Democratic uh, councilman, I think, originally from Brooklyn. Oh, and, uh, we, we, he's a congressman, a councilman, almost well, mayor. We also had the honeypot wife, you know, from the Middle oh, East, yeah. uh, who was, uh, you know. Uh, Puma Abedin. Like Abedin, a honeypot, uh, uh, deep state chick who. Um, They're still you know, That's how they stumbled onto a lot of his laptop stuff, you know, and the emails um, through WikiLeaks, you know, we're on there. Yeah, uh, PBD brought up the fact, and how much do you agree Peanut on Peanut butter and jelly brought it up? Who, who, who's PB, PBJ? Uh, brought Patrick it up? Bet David, the guy who was just talking oh, to Oh, him. you call him his initials. He's like JFK. Uh, yeah, sure, why not? A anyway, he um, was bringing up that Anthony Weiner has to have a dead man switch set up. Because you know that guy knows a lot of things that went down. That's why he's still walking around, most likely. Right. Well, he's got a he's probably got a safety deposit box somewhere with names in it. And uh, otherwise, mm -hmm. I mean, did he go to jail or no? He didn't. Go yeah, to jail. no, he went to prison. Oh, he did. Right. OK, I thought so. Right. OK. Yeah. And uh, and then rehab. A lot of good it did. And, hey, what did he come out with a new career or something? He went back to the same he's career doing radio. Oh, he's doing radio. Oh, well, my uh, God. Curtis, I Curtis Sliva. Uh, I think that's how you say his name. Curtis Sliwa. Yeah. Sliwa, yeah. What is that, it like? Their uh, co-host. Crossfire? Uh, kind of, yeah, the right wing, left wing guy. Yeah, well, th right. they're you know taking each side, right? So, uh, on AM radio in New York, ah, uh, that I could see that. That's a show I would listen to. That I mean, he's uh, he's very verb. They're both really good talkers. I mean, Slee was had radio <laughs> shows before. Slee was done radio before. I, I, Anthony Weiner just won't shut up. So I mean, no, um, you can see why he was a terror. I mean. Uh, I, I can see how he got elected. He's relentless. Uh, I'm, and oh, he's relentless. Yeah, he, at, at his peak, he, he was very, very good. Yeah, and um, even in that he interview. Was on a fast track. He was on a fast yeah. track to be uh, uh, Chuck Schumer. If, I, I think so. Kept it, I mean, he would have been. He could have replaced. He could have taken Schumer's seat. Yeah, um, I totally believe that. He even brought up Pelosi, talking to her, blah, 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 back in the day or mm -hmm. whatever. We got Adam Schiff out in California trying to get the California Senate seat. And there's a lot of opposition to, uh, not opposition to Schiff, but a lot of uh, political infighting over that seat.
Oh, I'm sure. I mean, that's an mm -hmm. incredible seat mm -hmm. to get. I mean, yeah, I mean and, you, find, you have to pry Feinstein's cold, dead hands off of that seat to get her out of there. Uh, it's kind of like weekend at Bernie's, too. I mean, she they don't know if she's alive. She doesn't know who she voted for. The staff is obviously running everything. Um, you know, and she's never been better. Never been better. She had <laughs> shingles. Who, who who hasn't had shingles? I mean, come on. It's oh, uh, yeah. easy to recover. You know, uh, that's a hard call. Vaccine. Feinstein or Schiff? I think I'm almost like, yeah, leave Feinstein in there and, and just roll her around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Probably slightly better for it. But welcome back, Mark. I missed you last week. You missed me? Where was I? Uh, oh, I you were on vacation. I'm sorry. Yes, I forgot. It seemed like we were together because we had the recorded shows, but we weren't. Yes. But we, I think for one of them, we were in the live chat. So yeah, last uh, Friday for um, Mickey. That's like Mickey being together. Now I've left. I'm in, our, in an undisclosed location. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, we could still broadcast here because like someone said on Twitter, my internet is fueled by kerosene. So <laughs> I, I, I'm using some sort of other fuel methods to fuel the internet here. There's a hamster running around on a wheel, you know, trying to perpetuate the lighting and the microphone here, and they're doing a good job. Well, at the rate we're going, this can be internet fueled by fury because mm -hmm. these people are completely insane. There's a trial that's supposedly scheduled for uh, May 2024. Well, that's a good day. Like I said to you before the show, I mean, they came out with this uh, uh, trial document date for Trump on May 24th. Why, why don't they just make it November 24th, you know, November 7th and just put it right in the election? That wouldn't help them as much as May 24th at the peak of the primary season. Uh, he's got to go to the Supreme Court and get an emergency ruling on this. Uh, and get it, Instead of waiting around with his white shoe lawyers, as uh, Barnes calls them. He, he's got to go to the Supreme Court today, this morning, himself, with the lawyers, with the press, with everyone else. Walk up the hill, you fat bastard. Take your friends and your golf clubs and go up there in a golf cart to the Supreme Court, knock on the freaking door, make a scene out of it, and get a ruling that they're interfering with the election and to simply give him a delay in this trial until after the election. I don't think it's asking much. I don't think justice mm -hmm. is going to be denied. And everybody could split the baby in a, uh, you know, King Solomon way and be happy. Uh, but he's going to pontificate. His lawyers are going to drag their feet. He's going to end up in a courtroom uh, in Miami, May mm -hmm. 20, uh, 2024, next May. And uh, he'll be belly aching about it then. Yeah. And I, I don't know if that's his best um, campaign subject. <laughs> what? <laughs> a ball. I'm a felon, or you know, I'm on. Oh the yeah, no, I know. Doing, I know. Like, it, it does get, get old. Tired of that crap after a while. You got to physically get out there and bless, impress the flesh in Iowa, which is what they're trying to stop you from doing. Instead of going along with it and feeling that the victim thing is going to cut it, uh, you got to fight back legally, you know, and get on this thing like today, not not six months from now, bro. Also, because these psychos have been planning this out for years now. Mm -hmm. Um, they planned out every single date, every single move, exact trial moves, the, the jury, everything. You know, he's just he's just winging it. He's just right. winging it. I <laughs> so mean, he now he's going to be indicted. Hard. He's going to be indicted by Jack Smith in a couple of days. He got the letter. He's going to be arrested, as I predicted over a year ago on this show. Uh, they're going to arrest him for January 6th. And uh, forget about the thing with the documents or the crazy woman. This is the big enchilada, Eric, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, because they've been painting this picture anyway. I mean, that's what I don't get. It's like, I feel like he should be throwing every roadblock, every mm -hmm. hazard, everything. You know, he's kind of just going along with their plan. Like, they yeah. wrote this out. They planned this for he, you. He's, he's playing defense. There. He's playing defense, and he's not on offense. Everything he's doing is defensive, and he's not offensive. He's got to get somebody like a Dershowitz on the other side or get these people from the other side – Forget about getting people from Breitbart and other places. Get You have to get people who are outraged who are Democrats, and there are a number of them out there, including RFK. Pick up the phone, call this RFK Jr., tell him you want to have a press conference with this guy. I mean, for the love of God. I mean, this is not complicated, Eric. This is yeah. not complicated. He seems to be, and I'm not saying he's running scared. He just is not playing offense. 
He's just <laughs> always on the defensive. Well, here we go, Ray. Ray, this is called tough love. It's not Trump bashing. It is literally saying, "Dude, we are me, worried bro. for you." I mean, <laughs> it's just Trump bashing. You're out of your mind. You got the wrong channel, bro. You got the wrong channel. You you flipped the the receiver and went to the wrong channel. Go look at your remote. Yeah, it's it's like, and he needs to. I mean, he needs to hire people who are going to go after Jack Smith. Investigate like him. Barnes. Investigate you what's got, going. Go to Barnes for Christ's sakes. I mean, Absolutely. Jack Smith is is a guy that the day he was hired, this was his job, and there really is no job. There's no investigation. It's not the Warren Commission. It's just we want this guy indicted by such and such a date, and that's the end of it. It's not. I mean, yeah. Jack Smith didn't go through you know uh, garbage cans like A.J. Weberman did in Greenwich Village of Bob Dylan in 1965 to find out what sort of uh, breakfast cereal Dylan was eating. This, this this thing was baked into the into the hiring of Jack Smith. You know, this is what he does. He, he went over to Kosovo, did the same thing with the uh, so-called war criminals. Yeah, he is like the perfect deep state monster lawyer. I mean, right. He even has the there. outfit that, that Klaus Schwab has. He's got one of those Star Trek outfits that they give out at the World Economic Forum, I guess, to lifetime members. You the get emperor. that. You get that emperor, that that emperor uh, uniform, I guess. Dude, I'd love to get one of those. Well, it was funny because we were watching um, The Great Awakening, just to keep it on Mickey Gillis. And Did you uh, say Mickey uh, Gillis? Mickey Willis? Willis. Willis. Sorry, go ahead. Mickey Willis, yeah. yeah. We did talk about Mickey Gillis on a previous show. Mickey Gillis is a great uh, cousin of Jerry Jerry Lee and uh, Fowler. Yeah. I'm That's not right. Fowler, Jerry, Jerry Swag Lee. Jimmy and, Swagger? And Jimmy Swagger, yeah. Yeah, everybody check out the Jimmy Swagger episode. And right, and go to Mickey Gilly's Willis. place. You can go to. You could see Gilly, Mickey Gilly himself, <laughs> in Urban Cowboy with John Travolta, uh, which is a good film pick of the week. Um, Urban Cowboy, a great film with John Travolta uh, playing against type, but another dancing movie for John Travolta. True. Well, in that point, I was like, I paused and I, I had to show Leslie, uh, my wife, and I was like, check this out. They don't even hide it. And she goes, "Are you kidding?" <laughs> and she she was captivated from that point on and watched the entire thing with me. Oh, you mean about Pandemic Three? Yeah, yeah. When 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 you see yeah. um, um, Klaus Schwab as Emperor oh, yeah. Palpatine, you know, yeah. wearing that full suit, she's like, "Oh my god!" And so she's like, "He looks like." And so she looked it up, and it was of course memed everywhere. She's like, "Okay, so I'm not the only one." It's like, "No, you're not no, the only it's, one." It's, I, I, they, 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 it's not that they live in a bubble. It's like. They believe that they're running the universe already, mm -hmm. that they have control rooms and screens, and they probably do all this mumbo jumbo thinking they've already accomplished what they set out to, which may be true. I don't even know. We may be having shows that, you know, that are meaningless. That, you know, they've already taken over the world. It's like we're broadcasting in a bunker in Germany saying the Nazis are going to invade Poland, and they already did. You know, the New York Times in 1939, by the way, not to get onto a segue, mm -hmm. the Nazis set up a false flag where they said the, the uh, Polish had crossed the, the line into Germany and uh, maybe you know this and blown up a mm -hmm. radio station on the border of Germany and Poland. And it was mm -hmm. actually them doing it. The and then they invaded Poland with a blitzkrieg, the famous blitzkrieg in 1939. Mm -hmm. New York Times front page, uh, Poland invades Germany. <laughs> yeah, they had a correspondent um, that was completely wired into the Nazis on the payroll in New York Times. Right, yeah, and Poland he, he invaded Germany in 1939, yeah. Yep, and that wasn't the only one he did. I mean, he 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 wrote everything that was pro Germany, pro Hitler, mm -hmm. pro Nazi for a while. But yeah, there's a great book on that called The Gray Lady Winked, I believe. Yeah, yeah, I've read I've read half of that book. It's in there, and it, I recommend it to everybody about well, how the New York Times it not is not just intellectually corrupt today. It goes all the way back to uh, the 1930s, 1940s. Where they right now, I want to uh, deep state. I want to definitely get into some super chats as we're going. Um, Lazy Sea Ranch came in really early. $50, dude. Red where Marina Oswald's rotten teeth are a hot topic on the JFK sites in the UK. Are they as bad as they say? Not Interestingly right enough, um, there was a woman named Hall, and um, she was a prototype, a precursor to Ruth Payne. Uh, Ursula Hall, I forget her first name. I have to look it up. The last name was Hall. She lived in uh, Dallas, and um, uh, interestingly enough, when Marina comes over to um, the United States, 
she had a crooked front tooth and she pulled it out with a pair of pliers herself before she came to the, this is really inside baseball bro, but I don't know, this is $50. So uh, yeah, I'll, yeah, give yeah, lazy, really. I'll give the lazy ranch some inside baseball. Marina pulled out her own tooth with a pair of pliers because the front tooth was so crooked and weird that she never smiles in any photo that you see. That's why she's not smiling is because she's got a hole there where the tooth was. So oh. this woman, Hall, you can't make this up. She all of a sudden gets separated from her husband, just like uh, uh, Ruth Payne did with Michael Payne. She has Marina Oswald move in with her as a girl, as a girlfriend, mother, and she's living with Marina Oswald. This is before Marina Oswald moves in with Ruth Payne. Uh, this is a very little documented story, and it's she's introduced to this woman Hall through the white Russian community that's in Dallas that you really is a petro oil community of engineers and Russian um, expatriates who have come to the United States after the collapse of um, of Russia through the communism. So Demar Schultz part that, of that too, right? Yeah, Demar Schultz part of that, and 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 some of these other people are. Um, Paul Gregory and Peter Gregory. Um, uh, one of them just had a recent book put out. They're, they're, they're lone nutters. But anyway, so this Hall, who she's living with, turns out to be a dental assistant at Southern Methodist University and takes her over there to have dental work done on Marina Oswald's uh, front tooth, uh, thereby uh, creating a smile for her that um, allowed her to smile um, after that. So I, I don't know where I'm going with this, but if that's a big deal in the UK, I hope that helps them in the UK about her uh, her teeth. I, I think it's odd that it would be a big deal in the UK anyway, because the UK are, yeah, let's just say they, there's a certain reputation that their teeth aren't as perfect as say. Right, which is Americans. why I think they're, they're dentally obsessed over there. No, no, that's why I think they, 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 they focus on that. But her smile... Um, later appears, I mean, not that she's got anything to smile about. I mean, her husband's dead. Uh, what she's smiling about is the, the $166,000 in media uh, deals that she makes immediately after the death of her husband. Book deal, film deal by a spook company in Italy that soon goes away. They bought her film rights, a phony uh, a spook company that was set up uh, by the intelligence organizations to buy her life rights for the film. And then a Pat Pat uh, Patricia McMillan uh, gets her book rights and becomes her biographer um, and is depicted also in Max Good's film. Uh, oh, the, very the, well. The assassination <laughs> of Mrs. Payne. So Priscilla McMillan is a spook. She also does the book on Khrushchev's daughter who defects. And she uh, interviews Lee Harvey Oswald in Moscow in the hotel. She ends up being the writer of this book about the, the the life of Marina Oswald, go me and Marina, or Marina and Lee, of course, it's called. Uh, but that money, which was about uh, $60,000 in 1963 money, it was just for, for the book deal. The film deal was like 98000 The book deal, uh, Priscilla McMillan takes years to put out the book because all they want is to tie up the rights so no mm -hmm. one else who's normal could get at her to do a real book. And they sure. do that with film. They still do it to this day. They will go in there and buy up the rights. And the reason I'm mentioning that is because I just read a story in the L.A. Times about how the uh, Christopher Nolan Oppenheimer uh, movie was made. And that book mm -hmm. was over 40, you know, it was written like 35 years ago. The guy died before he could even see the film get made. The, the book was owned by a b obscure wealthy businessman in new york who optioned it years and years and years ago and they've been trying to get this movie made typical hollywood story for 25 years and there was a guy named woods an actor in hollywood <laughs> and he was supposed to be oppenheimer and now he's an executive producer on the film uh, because mm -hmm. he was attached for so long it was supposed to be uh, sam mendez who was supposed to direct and Oppenheimer read the book literally a year ago, started to write his own screenplay based on the Oppenheimer book. And now the movie's coming out tomorrow or came uh, today. Uh, today it's being released and um, got very positive reviews. Um, 
but I don't see how. And Robert Downey Jr. plays this uh, senator who tries to take away his security clearance and uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, mm -hmm. The movie is, I don't know how it's going to work. There's been a number of movies on Oppenheimer. Um, apparently, a lot of visual effects on the part of Christopher Nolan, you know, with atomic energy and uh, electrons swirling around and stuff like I, that. I've heard, I've heard both. You know, like, it's the most brilliant movie of, ever, but then there's also maybe it's a little too much Nolan. So I, I'm right. Well, it's, it's three hours long, Eric. So that you got to bring a dinner and uh, you know some sort of a colostomy bag if you've had other other problems. And apparently, even the Mission Impossible movies, two hours and forty three minutes. Oh, they're all uh, getting I mean, these are longer. Long movies. What's they're that? all getting longer and longer and longer. I mean, the Avengers comic book movies are almost three hours. They're they're all getting super long, and they're not getting any better. It's like. They're just making them longer and punishing people for longer who have to sit there because they suck. Well, I, the crux I, I of this movie, first of all, like as I've said a million times, I don't like the British making movies about American history. That's uh, always mm -hmm. uh, uh, one of my peccadillos. Secondly, uh, of course, what he's into is the Senate hearings and the McCarthy era Red Scare 2 of stripping Oppenheimer as a communist of his security clearance. He was opposed to the H-bomb with Edward Teller, and he went on a public speaking tour to mm. denounce the creation of the H-bomb uh, and blah, blah, blah. So what the liberal Hollywood is attempting to do, of course, is to paint the conservatives into a corner in terms of what they did of stripping him of his security clearance, which I could care less. He needed to be stripped of his security clearance uh, because he wouldn't shut up about the H-bomb. Uh, you know, I mean, here's a guy who invents the atomic bomb Next thing you know, he turns against everyone saying, you know, go F yourselves. You know, I mean, it, they use it for better, for worse to end the war in Japan. Um, if you read about Curtis LeMay, which we're going to get into and in, in maybe on Tuesday, if I can finish all this stuff by Tuesday, which is highly doubtful. Not, but, not, not this coming Tuesday, the following Tuesday. Yeah, probably be the following doing, Tuesday. You know, uh, I, I just put a book in the mail that won't get to you till uh, Thursday. So, <laughs> That, oh, that right. But I'm saying I'm already doing research on Curtis LeMay. And one of the problems mm -hmm. with the bombing of Japan, not on, he didn't have the problem in Germany, was that they had the cloud cover over Japan all the time. There's a, a cloud cover. So they couldn't if he got under it, he was too low. And if he was above the clouds with the B-17s uh, later on, uh, you know, the B-24s. But he, he was either above the clouds and couldn't see or below the clouds and it was too low. This leads into what I'm getting, and that's one of many factors of using the uh, atomic bomb on Japan, um, oh. which people can argue till the cows come home. But my father told me, and he was in the Pacific at the time, World War II, flying over, uh, flying back to New York from, from World War II, um, and he saw literally thousands of ships, not thousands, probably hundreds of U.S. ships turning in the sea back to the United States after Nagasaki, literally turning like hundreds and hundreds of U.S. naval wow. vessels turning around. He saw it from the air, you know, flying back. Uh, it was, uh, God, I he wish was you got the, the footage, how impressive that would be. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, scope. somebody must have shot the footage, but it was visually stunning. He was on the USS Tangier. It was a PBY tender um, in the South Pacific, pulling PBYs out of uh, the South Pacific and then repairing them and putting trying to mock up uh, guns on top of them, welding guns onto them, machine guns, crazy crap, you know, just innovative stuff. Uh, yeah, they, he flew back after Nagasaki after August 9th, 1945. So um, who knows? Amazing. I know my dad got home. I know my dad got home. You know, yeah, you want to debate that? that okay. Yeah, no, counts to right. me. Absolutely. Um, by the way, we've got a $100 rumble rant that came What? Out. Yeah, the English. Is there, are, is there a question or something? Or uh, it's a statement. Um, okay. It's from a wall. Here, Mark and Eric, go f yourselves. Here's a hundred bucks. <laughs> well, they can do that all day. No, um, it's saying the English are anti-dentrites, or anti-dentites. So, okay. Okay. <laughs> there's something about yeah. There's something about that. that their their healthcare system, from what I understand, is is broad, but it doesn't cover dental. Yeah, I mean, it could be. I if mean, I remember, I could be wrong. I'm not. I'm, again, I hate the British. <laughs> well, but but we're happy to do shows in England. Should oh no, we have a lot of fans. I mean, I don't hate them individually. I'm just saying that 
this, the this MI6, this this incredible totalitarian state that has that has arisen uh, in the past ten years in England is just terrifying, and I I feel sorry for the people trapped behind enemy lines. Um, it's, it's the most terrifying state they, that I've ever seen since Nazi Germany over there. I mean, you talk about a police state, dear God. I mean, you, the UK, I mean, and there's no coverage, of course. I mean, I get most of my information from the Duran, uh, you know, uh, what's his name, who's over there, Alex, who lives in London. You know, he kind of talks about it on his show, which I highly recommend, the Duran, Robert's on uh, once in a while there. It's a great show about world events. You know, a, an English-centered world events, and then his partners in in Athens, Greece. But these guys are tapped in uh, solidly, and um, wow, what a mess the UK has become. I mean, Canada, we know because it's right here. Uh, we get feedback from Viva, uh, who, if he has the courage of his convictions, will come to our meetup <laughs> in Montgomery, Alabama, and come on the show and explain, you know, that he's coming to the meetup in Montgomery for Labor Day weekend. Speaking of that, I just shared a. Um a clip that's been going around of David's uh, favorite prime minister, um, Fidel's son. Yeah. And uh, this is him. And I had not seen this before. And I don't know what's creepier in it. He's talking about his brother who was found dead. Wait, wait, wait. Trudeau's brother? So, yes. Justin, Recently? Uh, this is like an older clip, like tw late 90s, early 80s. Right. Um, but he goes, if he had just stayed at home and played Nintendo and other things. Oh, my God. What did he die of? What did the guy die of? Uh, supposedly in an avala avalanche when there wasn't one that anybody knew of, he somehow was crushed or drowned. It was a weird freak skiing accident. Wow. But the really creepy thing was, okay, first he's doing this smirk, and he's like, if he only played Nintendo instead of going out skiing and doing a total duper's delight smile, wow. his mother acted like his lover it was the creepiest thing ever because when he said that she looked up and had this big grin and just looked at him so adoringly and wow. i'm like Ugh. i mean it is actually chilling wait well chilling didn't mac it. didn't macron marry his ninth grade art teacher or something they could have i i don't know the macron if anybody connection. knows in the chat <laughs> I, I i vaguely remember macron has married his older art teacher or something from school from elementary school some other twisted crap but they're french i don't know they can do whatever they want they're french it, um uh yeah sure <laughs> I, yeah i think the, the french government is teetering on the brink of collapse you know yeah it's um hold on actually you know what i have it here let me uh share it because i i forgot that i shared it out earlier this is some good radio folks or good youtube um da, 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 da. here we go here is the illustrious prime minister here how old is he here like in his 20s or something uh it's it's like 20 years ago or better oh look at him holy cow if michelle had decided to stay home and play chess and, and, and nintendo he would have been fine but he chose to go out there and that's what made the difference is that his mother that's his mother, dude. Oh, dear that, that's God. how a mother talks about her other son getting killed. I mean, oh, did, you see, did you see the way she? I mean, come on, th this is that was it, creepy. That was kind of creepy. Look at look at the, look at that. Oh, I mean, she's like, how old is his mother? Like twenty five? Uh dude, uh, his mother. I mean, I, I have no idea. But look at that that proud look. She's like, I I am with my super stud son. You know, Maggie so Trudeau famously refused to wear panties, as everyone knows. That is her claim to fame. And uh, I was at the Montreal Forum watching Team Canada in 1983. I think it was 83. Play the Russians. And um, I was sitting on the glass a few seats down from Maggie Trudeau, that woman. And uh, her husband, uh, Pierre Trudeau, the prime minister of Canada, and I think in the first period, again, I could be wrong. I think they were losing, I think the final score might have been 8-3 or something. Uh, they were down like 7 nothing or 6-1. I don't know the first period. He went out and had a press conference, Pierre Trudeau. And uh, she's running around with no underwear and a miniskirt. So, I, I, again, I was just visiting Montreal, and uh, this was my experience as a visitor. Uh, he goes out and has a press conference in the lobby of the, Mo the, Cana of the Montreal Forum, uh, because it was obvious that the Russians were crushing them, and they were—he was started crying, 
And I'm going, what the hell is he crying about? You know, I'm used to American sports. You know, there's no crying in baseball, as Tom Hanks famously said, <laughs> in, a league of their, in a league of their own, with Rosie O'Donnell, by the way, and Madonna, another good film pick of the week. Very good movie. Uh, yeah, it's a good movie. Uh, anyway, so he starts crying on the break on the in between periods, and then they go back and they, you know, continue to lose. And I remember Trediac, the goalie, you know, it had no teeth and he was just smiling from ear from ear to ear. He was so happy to beat the Canadians and destroy the West. Of course, he would probably be put to death if he if they didn't, but they just dominated this all-star team, which had guys, um, you know, I want to say like Ron Duguay was on there. I mean, there were Rangers uh and different people on the team. Floor. I forget. I'm not a hockey guy, but I'm just I'm just putting out some uh, stuff, you know, uh, sports That's stuff. another another good documentary. If people get a chance to watch the um, Soviets who lost on the Miracle and Ice mm -hmm. it came here to visit Lake Placid. And it went over like how devastating that was to their lives back home. You know, right. like it was such a big, wonderful, huge moment for us in 1980. It was it was a complete well, the, the, disaster. The, the, the reason I mentioned Lake Placid, there was, a, there was a girl named Lana Del Rey who was born and raised in Lake Placid, New York. And Lana Del Rey, who I love, who has been in the news lately, um, she is a singing sensation. I don't know if people know who she is. She's a, a singer-songwriter. Right? What's that? Kind of jazz, jazzy? Or? It's, it's jazzy. It's jazzy, right? She She's a singer-songwriter, um, contemporary a uh, beautiful young girl. She's been around for you know a number of years now. And turns out that she loves Americana. That's her thing. She loves 50s and 60s Americana. If you've seen any of her videos, they're quite amazing. Her songs are beautiful. She's got a beautiful voice. Uh, she plays piano and sings. And you know these videos are wonderful. She has been, <laughs> I don't even know how to say this. You can't make this up. She has become quietly, without any fanfare, without any knowledge, become in Alabama, um, outside of Montgomery, a waitress in a Waffle House. And what? this is not for video. This is she, this is not for anything. She's got plenty of money. Uh, she has been seen waitressing at a Waffle House in Alabama. And I thought uh, the connection with Lake Placid is that's where she's from. But we're also going to possibly go to that Waffle House, Eric and I, and try to meet up with her when we have the meet up in Montgomery. At least I am. I don't know about Eric. <laughs> I'm going to attempt to go to that Waffle House and get served by by uh, Lana Del Rey, who I'm in love with, um, and see if I can get. I'll stay there all day if she's the waitress. There was a photo today in the Daily Mail, I think it was, of her in the Waffle House uniform. And nobody knows who she is in the place. They don't know who she is. She somehow got a job as a waitress, you know, as a singer songwriter. She wants to do some research, you know, into what it's like. Just well, it's blown money. now, Mark. <laughs> well, it was in the, the Daily Mail, Mail, so it's obviously yeah. blown now. But I, yeah. I'm saying that uh -huh. uh, they talked to her people. They didn't know anything about it. They said, we don't know what she's doing. She goes all, you know, she's not performing. So she's doing this and apparently has done stuff like this before. No, I mean, no, I, I think that's great. You know, mad mm -hmm. respect. Um, but yeah, when you, oh, she kind of does have a rockabilly look. Mm -hmm. That I, I, As soon as you said 50s, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, she worships Americana, 50s and 60s Americana. And and, and um, that's her thing. So it's it, it's not surprising, but I hope she's there when we go down there. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> Lana, <laughs> if you're watching. Day of my life. What? Lana, if you're watching. If you're watching, we'll wait. There. If you can make it till Labor Day. I, yep. This is only this is the end of July, so don't quit the job. Don't quit your day job yet, or take a vacation. Just come back on Labor Day weekend. You take a vac well, she's we'll got to be, be there. there for a year before she gets vacation time, as everyone knows at Waffle House. I mean, oh, I was in true. Denny's. I was in Denny's here yesterday, where I am, and um, uh, you know, it was just such a pleasure to get this black label Grand Slam with with extra bacon and the hash browns and the eggs cost me $50, but you know, it's not like Denny's where it used to be five bucks. Now it's 50 bucks. Uh, <laughs> but who's keeping score? You know, I get to go to the super Walmart here. Greatest day of my life yesterday, just <laughs> dropping 200 bucks at the super Walmart. <laughs> I could stay in there all day. I bought crap. I'm never going to use half this crap. Is this going to be Costco in. tomorrow? I don't care about Costco. Super oh. <laughs> Walmart center. I don't know. What, there's no Costco over here. I don't oh, okay. do Costco. No, the super Walmart, bro. And the super center. That's what I like. Oh, my Lord. Well, 
Hey, let me get a couple of tips from locals here real quickly. Um, S. Right. Mandel uh, left a tip. I finished reading our RFK's book about Fauci, and it was the mm -hmm. most disturbing thing I've ever read. Going I know, forward, the last chapter. Go on. I'm sorry. Go on. Going forward, how do we prevent the rise of an of powerful, unaccountable bureaucrats like Fauci, J. Edgar Hoover, and Alan Dulles from getting into power in the first well, place? I, first of all, you can't confirm them in the Senate. That's number one. That's your biggest fucking mistake. Number two, if you take a cat like FDR, FDR, RFK Jr., who's clearly not going to get the nomination, and you give him, uh, you know, give him the ability to run the FDA, that would be a start. You know what I mean? Put him in charge of uh, the CDC or the FDA, and you'll see some goddamn changes. I mean, that's that's what the guy should be running for um, once this 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 campaign is over, which, according to those hearings yesterday, it should have been over. These people were so crazy yesterday in that um, House um, Oversight Committee on on uh, censorship. Uh, it was mm. the craziest thing I've ever seen. You mean when they voted to censor him on the hearing? About yeah, yeah, censorship? yeah. They kept voting. They kept stopping the hearing to vote to censor him and remove him into executive session so it wouldn't be on TV. Uh, keep in mind, this is what they were voting. And um, uh, Wasserman Schultz, a, mm -hmm. a known, a known yeah. psycho out of Florida from Long Island who hurt, uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz had to, just to give you some history, had to resign her chairmanship of the DNC because of WikiLeaks, because her and the Clintons were conspiring to destroy Bernie Sanders. That's what the emails were about. That's what the WikiLeaks was about. That's why Assange is in, in prison in London. That's why the phony Russiagate story was created. And it was all because of Debbie Wasserman Schultz conspiring with the Clintons to undermine the campaign and destroy and and uh, end the campaign of Bernie Sanders. You know who so, put them onto that, right? Put them on to... To, to started that whole um downfall it was tulsi gabbard who mm. was number two and she quit mm. Interesting. and she came out and said no clinton is sabotaging mm -hmm. or she either was number two or she was you know being offered number two but she's the one i believe who started the whole cascade mm -hmm. going down well then the kid is killed the rich kid is executed he's seth got rich. the thumb drive what's that seth rich Seth Rich is executed with a bullet in the back of the head, yeah. and he's not robbed of his uh, complete valuables. They said it was a robbery, and the family, you know, doesn't want anybody talking about it because they've obviously been either paid off or or shut up in some fashion. Uh, but he was the one who downloaded the thumb drive that they said was Russian hackers, uh, which led to the seizing of the DNC servers or the 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 acquiring of the DNC service by uh, Dmitry Perovich of uh, CrowdStrike. And uh, that's where the servers disappear to with the information on there about the download to the thumb drive by Rich, who was a Bernie supporter working at the DNC. Um, maybe a future America's untold story. That'd be a good one. I, I know there's yeah. some interest in that. I'm, I'm sure the yeah. chat's going to light up. Yeah. Uh, Silvhand sent a $50 tip on locals. Right on. Uh, new viewer who has spent the last month watching the Kennedy CIA and other uh, various other playlists. Mm -hmm. Love it all. Joining live the first time. Thank you. And welcome. Wow, very generous. Yeah, welcome. Yeah. I mean, the hearings yesterday were so crazy. Uh, as soon as they started, they kept getting interrupted. I'm going like, what is going on here? Because Jim Jordan was running a tight ship. And then they kept calling for the vote because of, uh, quote, RFK's hate speech. He can't be allowed to testify in open house <laughs> uh, subcommittee, uh, this oversight committee on censorship and government abuse of censorship. He has to be put into executive session. So they take the vote. So he, so Jordan goes, OK, and they lose eight to six, you know, because they didn't have the votes. I mean, it was it was such a feeble attempt to undermine him. And then they just started smearing him. As a racist and an anti-Semite, I, I mean, it was really uh, breathtaking and how evil it was, Eric. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, I, I haven't seen them go off on anybody that hard. I mean, they they, they, yeah. st yeah. they started down this path on Taibbi. Yeah, in fact, a bit, the, the, but not the as bad. The woman, the woman I was talking to you about, Stacy uh, Plaskett. Plaskett. Plaskett who was obviously a spook, and I don't mean that in a detrimental way, I mean that in an intelligence way, 
Um, if you look at her background, which I, you know, I wasn't aware of this woman. Now I'm just fascinated by her. I mean, she is the non-voting member of the Virgin Islands, and she is the minority uh, leader of this of this committee. She's the the, the minor, She's second to Jim Jordan. She doesn't ranking even remember. I think they call her. She, what, what's it called? The ranking, ranking minority member. member. Oh, ranking, ranking member. Ranking minority member. Minority member. Right. And I don't mean that as an ethnic thing. I mean, the, the Democrats are in the minority. But, I, you know, I looked her up because I'm, I'm watching this. I'm going, who the hell is this broad? And I kind of remember her as the uh, uh, impeachment manager against Trump. And I didn't really follow it that closely because it was such a sham what was going on with the impeachment. I don't know if it was one or two. Um, but it, when I started digging into her background, and this may be another subject of an America's Untold Story, so I don't want to give it away. Um, she apparently won election in, in the Virgin Islands with 98 percent of the vote. And that was a couple of years ago. She's now running unopposed. This is like something out of the Soviet Union with this. No, this is, no that's North Korea, Mark. OK, yeah, North, North Korea. Korea no. Let me put it this way. <laughs> she got 98, 98 percent of the vote in the last election in the Virgin Islands. She's a non-voting member in the House. She doesn't have a vote. But she is the minor, the ranking minority member on these committees. She, now, keep in mind, this is a broad who was born in Brooklyn, born in Brooklyn, somehow ends up back in the Virgin Islands where her parents came from. She was a prosecutor like Nick the Lo uh, Nate the lawyer in, in, in New York. She's an ex. Uh, uh, her father's a cop, an ex cop in New York. She was a Republican until 2008 and a prosecutor who was a tough prosecutor in two th up until 2008. She mm. switches over to the Democrats and becomes a, a Obama person. Now, this is a woman who went to the Georgetown School of Foreign Service, which is a spook factory, as many of you people who watch the show know. She did a year in France. She worked at the UN. And, and I'm tracing this woman down. I just want to point this out. She worked for a spook organization. Um, she uh, resigned the blah, 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 non voting. Oh, Mitchell Madison Group. She worked for a really, really dark group called the Mitchell Madison Group, which has got spook shit written all over it. And this woman is all I could say is an intelligence operative working within the Congress of the United States. Let me just put it that way without going into some more detail about her. She went to Choate. She was part, she's a Quake. She went to a Quaker school in Brooklyn. She went to Choate. Uh, and now she's a Lutheran. And about five or 10 years ago, there was a sex tape released with her and her nutty husband, where he's dressed up as a woman, which is showing right here. Her arms are hairy. She's got hair on her arms. Her kids are in the sex tape, for Christ's sakes. There's the, 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 the husband, who was, I think, her second husband, who's a, this one's a, a tennis player or something. I don't know. You can't make this up. But she had some sex tape. She's outraged. The husband is dressed in drag and she's doing stuff to him in the sex tape. And he's dressed as a woman. There he is. That's the the wonderful husband. I think his name is Small. Small. Biggie, <laughs> Biggie Small. Right, right there. What are those arms? Show the arms, Eric. This is what I was talking <laughs> about. Let me see those arms. Don't don't move yeah. that picture. What is that? What is going on there? I asked the people in the chat to have a look. Tell me what's going on with those arms. I'll take my answer off the air. <laughs> I don't know, but are you saying that uh, she may have dated Eddie Murphy at one time? I, I think she may have dated Eddie Murphy, and she hangs out with Michelle Obama at Wild Card Boxing on Vine in Hollywood uh, with Freddie Roach. Uh, hmm. that, being, <laughs> that being said, she studied law under an obscure guy who wears a kerchief on his head now um, named uh, uh, Jamie Raskin, the... Uh, the uh, the guy who was the, going after Trump in that impeachment. But her, her, her big claim to fame is a couple of years ago, she said on air that Trump needs to be shot. Now, this is, again, the ranking member of the minority, uh, non-voting member from the Virgin Islands of St. Croix, where I've been before myself when I lived in St. Thomas for a year. We used to take uh, motorboats over to St. Croix. Uh, when we were getting whelks out of the water and having barbecues there. It's a long story, but uh, maybe a story for another day. U.S. Virgin Islands. So maybe we could do a, uh, America's. Oh, yeah, good day. point. Uh, no, it is the U.S. Virgin Islands. Covers, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'd still be within our uh, territorial guidelines to do a story on the Virgin Islands. I'll tell you something. It's a place you never want to leave. Once you get down there and you start getting in that um, Caribbean groove down there, you like you don't care what the time is. You know, months could go by and you just go, hey, this is pretty good. You know. <laughs> oh but, my God. Uh, anyway, so, yeah, I mean, she's she's a weird, weird chick. Um, she also called for the recently. She threatened Matt Taibbi with prison time because he he got the acronyms confused. If, I don't know if you remember this, people. Well, and she wanted a source. She was doing everything she right. could. Right, she wanted a source, but she called for him to be imprisoned. This is a non-voting member who represents no one in the continental United States, my friends. And have you ever heard of? I'll, I'll be honest. I was like, wait a minute, Virgin non. Non-voting? It's insane. I've never only, heard the, of only the spooks, only the U.S. intelligence can pull this off. This is yeah. total spooks, Phil. I've never even heard of a non-voting member being in a leadership position like a yeah, committee right. chair, That's let right. alone the ranking right. member, for God's sake. I know. It's insane. It's totally insane. And the fact that she was born in Brooklyn represents the Virgin Islands. I mean, the whole thing just reeks of an intelligence program. And I didn't know about this. I, to be honest with you, I didn't. What? It's actually perfect if you think. Oh no, about I agree. It, because I she agree. has no she voting runs. record. She doesn't. What <laughs> do you do? Not only that, she's running unopposed down there. The last yeah. election she had, she won ninety-eight percent of the vote. Oh I mean, my what God. the hell is this? Yeah, it's... who's she going to debate? The the the, the non-voting member of Guam. Oh yeah, I, I, but that's what I'm saying. So it, it's like it is such a perfect intelligence plan because mm -hmm. she can't be hampered by a voting record. That's the only thing that you can get these people on. Sometimes is, right. oh, you voted against your party here, or you voted for the party here, or, or whatever it is. She cannot make any mistake in voting, and she can literally do whatever the hell she wants. And she's a leader. That is I, I also see I also see this guy heard out of Utah is running for president on the Republican ticket against Trump. And he's former CIA. You know, I mean, just going I just put on Twitter. Hey, hey, you know, heard how many how many votes the CIA get today? I mean, this is just they're running candidates now for president. That's how brazen this has become. This is a CIA operative. Well, who, they had who, another who, one in 2016, didn't they? Um, the, the savior of the Republicans. He was CIA, too, I believe. Uh, well, this guy out of Utah, uh, the, he's a black, light-skinned black dude with glasses. I don't know if you have a picture of this guy. Um, I remember calling him out when he was running as a congressman in Utah, I think it was. I don't. I can look. But I don't see anything. I can't remember the other guy's name, but um, it, it's not the first time. I think they were the last election they did it. Uh, let me well, the beauty was this Emma, Emma Jo Morris, who who was the chick from the Post, New York Post, who was uh, hysterically uh, funny in the hearings. Uh, she's now an executive at Breitbart News, but she, when she did the laptop from Hell Story, she was at the New York Post. A uh, very, very funny uh, woman and very, very quick on her feet in terms of the hearing. Uh, at some point, she was just laughing openly at the questions, having a great time. While RFK was sitting next to her, uh, stewing over it, being uh, smeared, you know, I don't know how RFK took it yesterday, but well, uh, I, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. And it's like, okay, so you're still a Democrat? Does that yeah, I mean, go okay, go go to the Nuremberg trials and tell tell us you want to reform the Third Reich for Christ's sakes. You know, go go <laughs> to you know, go go to one of these Nuremberg judge uh, uh, screaming matches uh, uh, and tell me that you're going to reform the Third Reich because that's what you're talking about. Yeah, and I, I ironically don't even get why the Democrats are going after him that hard, because, well, because we've he's discussed it. Twenty, he's polling at twenty plus, and he's a and he's a Kennedy, and he's visible, and he's got a good story. And and the fact is, you would have thought he was running on the Republican ticket yesterday. The mm. Republicans were so polite to him; they were agreeing with him. They were showing things up on the screen where he had been yep. censored, where they had been censored. They had the Assistant Attorney General of Louisiana sitting next to him, who, who was involved in Missouri versus Biden um, and that lawsuit. And, you know, the four of them, plus, it, plus the, the last one was this wily chick from the ACLU, which I thought, oh, this chick's in the wrong room at the wrong time. Uh, she was just a liar and another, uh, you know, completely deceptive Democrat. Um, but anyway, so, you know, it, it would seem like that he was running as a Republican. That's how the Republicans treated RFK Jr., and brutally harsh 
that was how the the uh, Democrats treated RFK Jr. I mean, it, it was night and day. It was one of the most bizarre political hearings I've ever seen in my life. Uh, yeah, and they, they didn't the even couch the terms. They didn't even couch it. They 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 yeah. essentially yeah. just called them a consp. Oh, forget. I mean, it's the nastiest terms yeah. I've heard yeah. since election of eighteen yeah. um, hundred. Yeah, I mean, it was really out there. I mean, he was he was boiling over this stuff, you know. And they gave him some extra time to speak, and you know what, whatever he could do. But holy cow, holy cow! Yeah, would you like Jim Jordan's job too? I mean, it's it, it's hilarious Man. to see the the back and forth with them and the um. He was uh, very the, dignified, Jordan. He was very well dignified. He ran it pretty tight, and uh, you know, at, at first they said they were going to put ten minutes for Robert Kennedy Jr. And they went crazy. They said, no one's allowed more than five minutes. And he said, well, people go over. You know what happens. And he puts 10 minutes on the clock. And they saw the clock. And they went, you can't put 10 minutes on that clock. And he goes, oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, we'll take that down. We'll, we'll give him an extra time, though. We're not going to put 10 minutes on the clock. But he gave him 10 minutes anyway. <laughs> well, and I, I, I do. I mean, like this is it. their candidate from their party. Oh, I, mean, I, know, it, I know. This is the Republican ranking member giving their democratic strongholder extra time to pontificate on how he's going to save and repair the democratic party. I mean, it's just bonkers. I mean, the world's gone haywire. Haywire. Well, I'm glad. I wish my grandfather was alive to see this. Well, he, he's um, Jim George. So um, he seems to actually be amused by them. Anymore. Yeah. Yeah. He but, was laughing himself during most of this stuff. Yeah. He, he, you can't make this up. I mean, the fact that a Democratic president, presidential candidate is being railroaded by Democrats. You know, I mean, uh, Wasserman Schultz was treating him like he had escaped, uh, you know, from Trump's garage or something. Oh, wow. Oh. Somebody wrote uh, Mass Massey uh, gave RFK Jr. his time to speak. Yeah, 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 yeah. A couple of them did. But Massey was very good. Massey was very good. But again, isn't he a Republican from Kentucky, Massey? <laughs> No, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. This is crazy. <laughs> this is crazy, Eric. Well, that, when was the last time Matt Taibbi was, um, you know, handled and got along well with Republicans? Yeah, that's yeah. That's uh, I mean, it, it's. I mean, the, the question world. again, and I, I wish you know Barnes or, or someone was here. The question again becomes, what is RFK Jr.'s path to victory? It's the only question that means anything. You know, I saw this thing by Lawrence O'Donnell on MSNBC. I was watching The Hill this morning, and these two women were you know, being very supportive of RFK Jr. And they were showing how CNN was melting down uh, with Chiron saying that RFK Jr. wouldn't admit he was a liar. And then Lawrence O'Donnell went into this diatribe about uh, how he doesn't want to give him any airtime to give him any oxygen for his views because he's a conspiratorial maniac and blah, blah, blah. You know, uh, so he is getting some notice by uh, mainstream media is the point. Well, because he, he he's getting too big to yeah, ignore. Okay. To ignore, yeah. It's funny. Anthony Weiner was talking about him, and uh, Patrick David. He was like, "Well, have you read this book?" And he's like, "Why would I read a conspiracy book?" And he's wow. like, well, you're criticized, you know, because he said he's a conspiracy laden guy. And, and did you read his book? No. Why would I read the book? Well, how can you read? I just read books about it, or I read articles about that. I have other people. You can get somebody else to come on here. Wow. Well, step. to answer the first guy's uh, uh, super chat, the book is amazing. But when you get to the last chapter, he names names in the last chapter of the book. And these organizations, these obscure organizations I've never heard of who um, are involved in many of these nefarious things are in the final chapter of the book, which is worth the price of the book. And also the book, half of it is about Bill Gates. And that is eye opening um, just about the he should have had his own book, Bill Gates. But he half of it is in this Fauci book that RFK Jr. wrote uh, uh, quite revealing. And again, there's a lot about RFK Jr. to like, but we don't we don't have that kind of system right now. We've got a, a, a winner take all end of the world election coming up where democracy is hinging on on, on the face of the earth. And we don't have time for any pr professorial debates of what uh, RFK Jr. is going to bring to the table. This is a two-man race. And the faster we clear the field, and this is what I've been talking about for a number of weeks now, the faster we clear the field of every extraneous player and have Biden versus Trump, the better it's going to be for Trump. Just think about what I'm saying. This is like having Ali versus Frazier 
with a bunch of midget fighters running around the ring. And you're waiting for Ali and Frazier to go into in, in the, either the Thriller, Manila, or whatever fight it is. These guys who are at the bottom are taking up airspace. I said last week that RFK Jr. is taking up money from Trump supporters. This is another factor. We don't have the luxury. If this is 2028, RFK Jr. comes out of the gate, let's roll. Let's roll. This is not 2028. If you think that Biden has, has been dangerous for the last four years, think about what he's going to do in a second term with no checks or balances upon him. Think about that. And then think about how you're going to vote for RFK Jr. as a protest vote. Think about how you're going to send money to, to RFK Jr. Think about how they're putting Trump on trial to prevent him from going out and meeting you and raising funds to, to get this nomination and, and nail this thing down. Think about what this guy is going through. We do not have time. And I say that it's sad, but we do not have time for RFK Jr. in this election cycle. I know that's crushing. I know that's sad. I know that's dark. It's not 2028. This is 2024. He's not going to run as a Republican. He's not going to run as an independent. He's going to take Trump money and he's going to take the airspace that media would be covering of Trump away from him. There's only so many news cycles you can have, people. I know this sounds incredibly pragmatic. I know this sounds incredibly like real politic. It's not theoretical. It's not we're in a bar talking about who could do this. This is not one of those shows on Showtime where it's a political circus. We have two guys. The faster we get those two guys into a ring, the better it's going to be for all of us. And I'll defer to Eric on after this. Totally agree. Um, let me get super chats. So that make me happy. Okay. Um, Lady Freddie, last week you mentioned Carey family and alcoholic. Which one? Any take on Cindy McCain? Oh, well, well Hines uh, and Shrum, uh, Shrum talked about how uh, Teresa Hines, yeah. Uh, is that the wife was a total yeah. alcoholic and they, and Carrie was constantly trying to put her to bed all the time and get her out of the way. And Sh mm -hmm. uh, this is Robert Shrum, who was the used to be the head of the DNC, a uh, big uh, shaker in Maka and the and Democratic politics, talked about Teresa Hines and her alcoholism. Mm. Uh, any take on Cindy Not McCain? Me. What's that? Any take on Cindy McCain? I think she's been known to be an alcoholic. I, I, didn't she? Isn't she in recovery or something? I think she went. All to I know is she is the Coors heiress. I don't know if that right, but I think she went to rehab and and okay. got sober. I don't, I'd have to look that up. I, I, I think she might, have gone to, she might have gone to Betty Ford for all I know. All right. Well, we got some new members. Let me pump these through. David Armitage became a member. Thank you. Jay Kimball became a member. Thank you. Uh, Bookworm. Became a member and thank you very much. Um, let me see. It was at least two weeks ago for Carrie comment. Uh, that must what be the Teresa Hines. What was that? Yeah, well, it, it's a follow up on that question about the alcoholic. And I think it oh. was when we were talking about um, the Forbes family, uh, Michael Payne, right. Carrie came up because. He's a cousin. I guess he's a Forbes. Yeah. And I'm, Forbes, I think yeah. that, that that probably was mentioned in that um, in that show. That, that's all I could figure well, out. Just to get back to this uh, uh, John Pick thing, I forgot to mention in the Oswald episode, there um, is an Air Force base uh, in San Antonio. Uh, Lack, Lack, uh, what's it? Lack, Lackdale Air Force oh, Base? Lackland. Lackland. Lackland Air Force Base. Okay. Just this one little tip little tip of the iceberg thing I forgot to mention last week. John Pick leaves the Coast Guard and joins the Air Force, um, I think in 1961 or mm -hmm. 1960, and he ends up stationed at Lackland Air Force Base on November 22nd and November 21st in 1963 when JFK shows up there. Wow. <laughs> There's a small yeah, world. A small world. Uh, this is Oswald's half brother at Lackland Air Force Base in San Antonio, Texas. JFK goes from San Antonio to Fort Worth to Dallas. So on November 21st, uh, he's at San Antonio, and so is uh, Oswald's half brother, John Pick. And John Pick is really obscure. Like I couldn't find yeah. pictures of the dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, 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 that's why that photo was so good of the family gathering because Pick is in that photo. Uh, somebody mentioned in the Warren Commission, he says he didn't recognize his brother. But in the episode, we talked about how Robert Oswald uh, was shocked at the look of his brother getting off the plane, that he 
coming out of Auschwitz. And mm. and he said that he thought Oswald had had, uh, well, now we're both gone. Oh, now we're back. Oh, we're uh, we're Oswald, Robert Oswald said he thought that, uh, Lee, what's that? Robert Oswald said he thought that Lee had had shock therapy. What was that? Go ahead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, he was stunned at how emaciated and 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 bad Oswald looked when he got off the plane uh, from the Soviet Union um, via uh, you know a couple other stops, New York and and uh, Rotterdam, um, and he was shocked at how bad he looked. He would lost a lot of weight. His hair was completely thin. He was almost bald. Blah blah blah. And he asked Lee about it. Lee said, "Harsh Soviet winters." Uh, a lot of other people, like John Armstrong in his book, um, Harvey and Lee, I think it's called, uh, mm -hmm. said that this was a double, and it may very well have been a double. I don't know about that, but there were Oswald doubles. Um, but, you know, clearly Robert knew his brother. I mean, it's hard to fake out a brother. I mean, if some guy showed up and said he was my brother, and I, I could solve that riddle in like three questions, you know what I mean? It, it, that would be the greatest performance of all time to try to put a brother in with another brother. Now, that being said, there were, like I said, there was reports of, um, of uh, Roberto Oswald being in Mexico City at the time that Lee Harvey Oswald was supposed to be in Mexico City. So maybe he, he was on a mission himself, Robert Oswald, as an ex-Marine. So. Okay, and by the way, we were, I think we were interrupting our connection. So uh, yeah, I would just start I, yeah. to say something. So it, if this happens in the show, folks, we're you know, we're playing a little bit with technology here. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It's on the road, so bear with I'm us. In a, I'm in a weird spot here. Um, let me do some more super chats to keep them in here. Did you guys see the censorship sharing? Yeah, we saw that. We just went over that about. Yeah, that's what we're talking about, right? Yeah. But, well, I'm just yeah. you know catching up. Um, Dallas named the expressway after LBJ because they stole the land. That's funny. That is. That's funny. It took me um, two days once to drive across the LBJ Ranch, so. You couldn't have a bigger ranch. Uh, I mean, maybe there is a bigger ranch in Texas. I don't know. Well, uh, David Parsons, my dad was the only Gentile at Aaron Spelling's Briss in 1923. Wow. What a weird, obscure part of pop culture. <laughs> that wow, so that's kind of weird. I, that's worth a, a, a one-inch tip. Um, yeah, for sure. Um, Balak, <laughs> what's the best argument to discredit Judith Barry Baker? Are okay. any parts of her story true? She comes across as sincere to me in many of her She's interviews. So sincere. She well, I asked her once when she quit the CIA, and uh, that was the end of the conversation, uh, because she said she was working with the CIA, coming up with a um, cancer uh, injection to kill Castro. She was working closely with the CIA, so I simply asked her when she quit working with the CIA, and uh, that was the end of our conversation. There you go. There's a whole book written about, you know, comparing it. I forget the guy's name. Um, I've posted these links several times or whatever. Uh, Spartacus, Spartacus International. Yeah, there's a book called Judith Barry Baker in her own words. She's con contradicted herself on numerous occasions, and she's been thoroughly discredited by the JFK research community. I'm not going to go into every single discrediting thing that she's done, but she's has stepped on her own. Uh, female dick a bunch of times, um, and I mean that in a in a literary way. Um, her original book, the one that you read, was supposed to be a novel. She wrote it as a novel in Amsterdam, uh, surprisingly, where she was working as an operative. Uh, the book was then turned into a nonfiction book. Uh, it was a long story, but uh, let it be said that um, she has been caught in many uncompromising positions and uh, misstatements um, in the past. True. Pasha says, Mark, that doesn't look at all like the sun. Um, because you were going to somewhere cooler like the sun. Well, it's like, cool in here. I haven't been outside in days. So um, uh, what about Dorothy Kogallon? <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> you know, it's because somebody bought the book and they're reading it. And she said on Twitter, she goes, now I feel terrible having read the, reading this book. She felt guilty reading it. Oh yeah, um, I'm not. You know, but by the way, I mean, she Dorothy Kilgallen is a gossip columnist. She doesn't become a crime reporter until like the last couple of years of her life. She was known to be a gossip columnist and was fed. Who are usually not keeping secrets? They're usually spreading. Right, they're secrets. usually quite blabby. They're usually quite blabby. And in fact, most of her 
inside information came from Mark Lane down in Greenwich Village, who was feeding her stuff about um, the Kennedy assassination. There was no bigger expert at the time than Mark Lane, and he was her deep throat. You know, he was her, her source. All right, I'm not your buddy. Jack Smith is a ju judicial hitman. I agree. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Donald J. Skywalker. Uh, what do you know about the dinner party the night before the assassination? Attendees, et cetera, just found your channel and are catching up on Garrison now. We covered that. Um, the, 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 Madeline Mercus, Brown? the Mercuson party has LBJ there. Jay Hoover is there. Um, Hunt is there. There's different disputes as to how many and how many people were there and who was there of uh, notoriety. Now, people did come and go. It wasn't like they people think you come to a party, you stay for eight hours at a party. I mean, there's people who go to like multiple parties, people stay for 20 minutes, they split, you know, but there's, there's quite substantial information of LBJ being there and Jake Hoover being there of the two main uh, people being, there. I've never seen confirmation of Nixon being there um, mm. and other people being there. Uh, Connolly, I don't have any confirmation on Connolly, uh, but definitely for what it's worth, um, uh, Jake Hoover, and um and lbj madeline brown episode i believe we did go into the part yeah of if you look at the madeline brown episode you'll see some more details about it and who were the sources one was a driver another one was a seamstress i think it's covered in one of the episodes the final episode uh, which was banned in the united states of the men who killed kennedy and i think i uploaded that on locals on structure.locals.com yeah. Yeah, you might want to join that. Plus, you might want to subscribe to our channel. We're almost at our golden silver chariot moment. I think we need about 8,000 more human beings or one person to subscribe 8,000 times. Either way, I think we're about... With different accounts and devices. But yes. Yeah. Different accounts. If you got like 8,000 different accounts and devices, you could literally put us over the top and go into the America's Untold Stories Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio. Absolutely. Grandpapa, Mark, my father was set to go to invade Japan. The bomb went off and instead he was assigned occupation duty. How many of us wouldn't be around? I totally agree uh, There's with a that. lot of estimates, right, Eric? You, you know the estimates of the invasion, uh, island by island. They would have fought to the death, right? I mean, then you've they got They would not with... have quit. Never right. would have quit. The, the honor in that culture was so strong. And mm -hmm. I mean, they, modern terrorists learn from kamikaze pilots. I mean, that's how serious. I, you know, my father are. told me that they covered up the amount of when he got home to Brooklyn, he was shocked to be to to find out that they covered up all the kamikaze attacks. And apparently I read years later that FDR asked the news media to, to for the sake of morale in the United States and newsreel footage in the theaters to not show the kamikaze attacks. My father said it went all through the war. It was not the final days of the war that's been depicted on the History Channel. My dad said there were kamikaze attacks all the time throughout the four years of the war that he was there. And also, you know, as Eric knows, I mean, they they would have to fight island by island without having landing landing bases and everything else. It would have been a nightmare uh, to continue the war that way, losing hundreds. Some people say hundreds of thousands of men. Americans would have, would have died. In, oh, yeah. Right. And Japanese, no, no, not just Americans, and but Japanese. Japanese. And Japanese, and, yeah. Because uh, let's just say that they were far, I hate to say they're more dedicated than us, but they were. I mean, they would die. Well, also and defending, the homeland, defending the homeland, defending the homeland was, yeah, that was the, you know, the, the emperor, you know, going on the radio and surrendering. Uh, you know, that being said, um, th there was a, a famous story, I think it was covered in Life magazine, 1965, there was a soldier sergeant, Japanese sergeant who was guarding an island next to Okinawa by himself, by himself. He didn't know the war was over and he was the last surviving member of the Japanese army. He was a sergeant. It's like 20 years later or something. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was 1965. Yeah. I remember the story. It was in Life magazine. He was guarding the island. He, that's how dedicated this guy was. 1965. Wow. I mean, the wow. sushi went bad very quickly, but I mean, he still was able to keep going. You got to respect that. You no, do. no kidding. No I kidding. Mean, come on. Uh, let me see. Uh, JS, what channel and format did Barnes do the Vegas shooter breakdown? Thank you. You're both awesome. It's, in, got, on, his it's on their locals. I, yeah. I think it's on their locals. I don't know if they did as a separate download. I'm not sure. But no, no. I think it's a hush episode, right? 
Yeah, but it might have been a special one. I, I don't know it, but oh, it's VivoBarns.locals.com. And you know, but you got to be a member to get in there. Like you got to be a member to get our secret PDFs that Eric put up of uh, Robert Oswald's book this week. If you want to get that, I think you have to join and become a member. It's sad. It really is sad. Yeah. I mean, it's it's an incredible amount of money. Uh, I wouldn't do it. It's five dollars a month. It's enormous amount. And if I were you, I wouldn't get it. But if you want to read the Robert Oswald PDF, I think you have to become a member. And the Madeline Brown PDF. Oh, yeah. And also yeah. I put up, I found the Abby Hoffman papers, like FBI. Uh, it was part of his files. I found the papers at a at a university. I put them up for members only on, uh, on uh, Locals for Us this week. And some other additional JFK uh, documents that I put up this week for members, um, from the recent release by the Biden administration before they dictatorially clamped down against the Presidential Records Act, which Jefferson Morley, with the help of the Mary Farrell Foundation, is suing the Biden administration uh, to, um, I guess, you know, rescind the executive order, um, which is unconstitutional. But uh, Morley, to his credit, um, with the Mary Farrell, Farrell, Farrell Foundation, has gone to court against the Biden administration. Yeah, he's he he is definitely on it um, at the forefront of that. Um, here's a light one, and you might as well do the uh, hero of the day. Um, oh right, Mark, who's, who's your blues favorite artist? blues artist? Yeah, God, well, that's a tough question. I really, you know, I love Albert Collins. I love Buddy Guy. I I I love um, a, a lot of these guys. Most of them are harp players. I would have to say there's like a guy named Snooky Pryor that I love. Um, you know, there's Sonny Boy Williamson. Uh, there's Sonny Boy Williamson one and Sonny Boy Williamson two. It's a long story. Maybe we'll do a Heroes of the Blues, America's Untold Story. But while we're here, today's hero of the blues is the legendary Charlie Patton, who is probably pretty well known to most uh, uh, American aficionados of the blues uh, one of the most influential mississippi bluesmen charlie Patton, was born in the 1890s raised in the delta town of dockery by 1910 he was already an established blues singer charlie Patton is really famous known for such songs as pony blues a prolific performer he recorded more titles 42 within a single year than any blues singer of the decade after his debut in 1929 his blend of comedy effects and hard blues gave him a unique musical identity. He died in 1934. Um, I highly recommend you find on YouTube Charlie Patton, listen to some of his music because he is um, today's hero of the blues. Awesome. Awesome. Um, hey, you're into heart players. What, did you ever check out Toots the Enemy? Toots Thielman, yeah. He is a, a white dude who is not really a blues guy, uh, Jazz, but an incredible. Think, right? Yeah, it's more of a jazzy uh, novelty act. I mean, I never really cared that much about Twitch Dalesman. He's obviously a great player, but um, the real guys are like Sonny Boy Williamson and and, and that group. And and um, it, there's harp players that are out there that are legendary, mostly black, mostly out of Chicago, when they went electric. Junior Wells, who played harp alongside Buddy Guy. Um, there's a lot of guys. There's a lot of good guys. Definitely, definitely. Um, <clears throat> R.I.P., Anthony, uh, who is it? Di Benedetto. Who is it? I don't know. I'm not familiar. It sounds with familiar. Sure that is. I think Tony Bennett died. I think that's Tony Bennett's real name. Oh, that's I think I'm, it. this is Tony that's Bennett's it. real name. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah. And rest in peace. 94. Not too bad. Yeah. What, no, what I do don't you think, think about that. that? What do you think about that last performance a, a few years back? I thought it was good. It was actually controversial. He had Alzheimer's, really couldn't place himself. But apparently, mm. when he went on stage with Lady Gaga, he hit mm -hmm. every marker, oh, never that's lost right. a beat, and then you know was that's back right. and being confused when he went off. Um, well, wasn't it like Mel Tillis and Gomer Pyle who both stuttered but were able to sing perfectly? They were Mel both, Tillis uh, for sure. Yeah, and I think Gomer Pyle too. They were both able to. They both were incredible stutterers, uh, but when they sang, they sang perfectly. If somebody in the chat knows about Gomer Pyle singing, that would be an Well, I know about record. his singing. I didn't know that he had a stutter. I mean, he, he was in the, the show. I forgot his real name. Um, Jim uh, Barner or Barney? Jim Neighbors? Jim Neighbors? Maybe Neighbors. Okay. Jim Neighbors, right? Yeah. Gomer Pyle with Jim yeah. Neighbors? Yeah, he sang, uh, if I recall, at the Indianapolis 500 every year, like to open it 
for whatever reason. But he did full wow. opera. Um, interesting. Okay, Tall Paul. Andy Kaufman, while starring in Taxi, worked as a busboy at Jerry's Deli in Hollywood. It might be. That's interesting. I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> well, I, guess I think he know. had to do Well, no, that was for research. Yeah, that was probably a research, some character that Kaufman was working on. Yeah. Yeah, I can. I totally Jerry's see Deli. That. I miss Jerry's Deli. Jerry's Deli was like this modern Jewish deli in Studio City that didn't survive COVID. Um, oh no! Uh, and, you know, financially, um, I think they opened up another one somewhere else. But there was Jerry's Deli was unbelievable. You go there two o'clock in the morning, you know, after a show, and it was one of those places. Wow, that's crazy. It was fun. Um, you know what? I want to have my own heroes of the cards. And okay, what do you got? Check it out. How about Ruth Payne? Oh, that's exciting looking, man. That would be a good t shirt, like a big Ranker Rocks t shirt, huge. Or, of course, whoa, whoa, bro, that looks good. Whoa, what else you got? Beale Wesley Frazier. Oh my god, I'll trade you a Frazier for for an LBJ. (laughs) Holy crap, General Walker. Look, what's on the back? What's on the back of the walker? I've got a, a basic description on the back. This one's right on. not quite as easy to read, but... Yeah, I see there's some paint going through it there. I mean, I've already shown Jack Ruby before. And you can that's, see... That's uh, a good one. These look like original paintings. They're very hip. Very that, hip. That I, I would, how many are in the series, Eric? How many can you uh, get? Right now, we have um, six of them that have been produced. And this is the last mm-hmm. one, J.D. Tippett. Uh, they're what's in sets of three. You know, right. kind of like the old days when you get, you know, the little bubblegum packs. Only only with these, you actually know what they're going to be. I, I They're not randomized, and it's not like one of those where you have to buy 100 packs to try to find that one. Sure, freaking you're trying LBJ to get Ken card. Griffey Sr. You've got 85 Dick Trzewskis. I mean, it was a pain in the ass. You know, you, you were cards that you tr- you had so many of one card that you couldn't get rid of them. You couldn't really get the great Mickey Mantle card. You had to get all these... <laughs> Yeah, to get all these Roy Smallies, but yeah. uh, so you're saying when you buy these cards, and um, yes, I did run them through AI. Oh, Hunley admits it, no of doubt course. about it. Yeah. <laughs> no, both the card and the descriptions. Um, the descriptions I tra- went through our transcripts and then ran AI to do a description and then ran more AI to pare it down. So, absolutely, wow. a lot of AI. Wow. But, um, okay, uh, BTK, a New York Times reporter, wined, dined, and caviar by Stalin and wrote, yep, that's the same. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, that Ukrainians love Stalin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, that's a great book. It, he, go, that's a great, yeah, that's a great example of the New York Times. They were yeah. in bed with these cats. They were in bed with these cats. Kind of always have been. They're, they've always right. been. Right, yeah, but people think it started under Trump. It didn't start under Trump. It goes back way way back to 1917 the communist revolution nostra dumbass trust the plan patriots are in control well oh, hopefully they will be again um at least we've got these committee chairmanships you could see how uncomfortable the democrats were yesterday like they were just having fucking temper tantrums bro you know and jordan was having a good time so was massey i mean what a what a fun event to be <laughs> to be the to be involved in an oversight committee on censorship where the democrat is the victim and uh, these ladies were having temper tantrums all day. But what children? I mean, I, I'm just seeing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, okay, you've been following politics for longer than I have, but have you ever seen these temper tantrums? Uh, it, it, it's Boy, literally it, it like- was breath. It was really breathtaking. I mean, they 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 were linking him to the Tuskegee syphilis experiments. Uh, RFK Jr. I mean, it was down and dirty, bro. They want him to go away, and and they're going after Cornell West. I don't know if you saw. Professor Cornell West. Oh, yeah, he's very Cooper. dangerous. He's, oh, he's dude, because he's running third party. He well, he's the most 5%. dangerous person. Yeah, he's, he's the most dangerous. dangerous person of all to Biden mm-hmm. because Biden completely depends on that black vote. That's what got him the election to begin with was South Carolina. And you get a, a Cornell West who was saying, no, these these mofos have been lying to us. And if he pulls any degree of the black vote, that's extremely dangerous. If he if he pulls any percentage, they're done. That's yes. how close it is. I mean, they have, they do not fear RFK Jr. as much as they fear Cornell West. And something, because first of all, Cornell West is running as a third party candidate. 
Yep. Uh, let's be let's be uh, clear about this. He's going to get on X amount of ballots. They're going to try to go to court to block him from getting on those ballots. I predict uh, Cornell West better watch his health. Uh, Cornell West we, Cornell West has a, a bullseye on his back. And this is a guy who is much more dangerous. He's very eloquent. Uh, mm -hmm. People know his name. He knows he's a great public speaker. And, uh, you know, whether you believe his socialist politics or not, it's meaningless. It's the color of his skin that's dangerous to them, not his socialist uh, angle on things. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and he's I mean, and he won't take a single Republican vote. No, no, no. Yeah, absolutely that's not. A, but, but RFK yeah. Jr. will. RFK yes. Jr. will bring people to cross over into the Democratic Party. I know that for the primaries because they told me so. I know that people have donated money to him who now regret that they did that because they don't have another $1,500 to give to Trump once the dust settles. Think about it, people. Just think. try thinking pragmatically about this election. I know it's, it's difficult because it's a little confusing, but please try to understand that there are people who don't have that much money. Grassroots money is what drives these populist campaigns for people like Trump and for people like RFK Jr. If you're going to give $1,500 or $500 or $100 to RFK Jr., you may not be able to afford to give money to the candidate that you'd really like to see once the dust settles. So I, I just think about what you're doing, folks, because this guy's taking in a million dollars every couple of days, RFK Jr., and that's nothing to sneeze at. And the Democrats are not complaining about him taking money because that money is not coming out of the Biden campaign contributions. It's coming out of the populist uh, uh, treasury that is now being drained by him, uh, by RFK Jr. That money is not coming from DNC people, Eric. That's actually why I'm a little confused that they're going at him that hard, because I, I think he's more destructive yeah. uh, for the soft right, you know, for the, oh, Trump's undignified right. There, there are a mm -hmm. lot of people who are like, oh, well, I kind of like RFK and he's not a deep state guy. So, oh, and he's very deadly to you know Trump in that way. Well, as I said last week, I mean, imagine if Trump did not switch parties, ran as a Democrat in 2016 against Hillary Clinton. That's, in essence, what you have here. This is Trump in 2016 having not switched over to the Republican side because he was a Democrat as well. RFK Jr. refuses to switch, refuses to run as an independent, insistently on this suicide mission over Japan. They're going to crash his B-17 into, into a mountain at some point. And uh, that money, that millions and millions and millions of dollars will have gone to waste. And the Biden administration will be laughing their ass off that that money was all burnt up because that money would have gone into other populist candidates around the country, including the head of the party uh, who is going to be indicted probably this week. Again. Again. Um, uh, Leo Battenhausen, Great Minds Think Light. I was watching the Wiener video just today and a doc on Oppenheimer yesterday. Oh. Thanks for your great work. It's yeah. great. I mean, there's a lot of stuff on Oppenheimer. This is not I, I'm not rushing to see this three hour film of uh, Christopher Nolan's. You know, I wasn't happy with Dunkirk. Um, he apparently had seen um, wanted to do a movie on World War Two. And he went over to Spielberg's house and Spielberg showed him in his screening room um, a screening of a war picture that he did um, with Tom Hanks about World War Two. And uh, in that in that war picture with Tom Hanks and Tom Sizemore, by the way, the late Tom Sizemore is in there. Um, he realized quickly that he could not make a film on the scale of the invasion of Normandy that uh, Spielberg had done. So he decided to make a movie about Dunkirk, you know, from a British point of view. And he decided to cast everyone who looked alike. And one of the strangest things I've ever seen in my life, every actor in Dunkirk looks alike on purpose. And his statement was, well, they're all, you know, in the same position. So I wanted them to, to people to realize that these are all similar looking people. And anyway, it's hard to follow any of the actors uh, in the movie because everyone looks alike. And, you know, I don't think it's one of the great war pictures of all time. That being said, he's now taking on Oppenheimer and the um, situation of the creation of the atomic bomb. I had a, I went to school with a guy named Tony, uh, John Kish and later Tony Kish's brother. They grew up on Central Park West. 
And both of his parents worked on the atomic bomb. They were both physicists. They went to Los Alamos. Uh, they later died of radiation sickness years later, uh, you know, in the 80s, but they uh, the 70s or 80s. And they, they went, they were uh, from Germany. They were German Jews. And their father, as I mentioned before, had been a physician for Kaiser Wilhelm. And when the uh, uh, World War I, and he went and put his uniform on, and he stood on his front lawn in a suburb of Berlin. And when the stormtroopers were driving by in a truck, he stood there at attention, and they stopped and they threw him in the back of the truck and they took him to Dachau. And that was the end of, uh, of my friend's grandfather. But the parents got in a, a plane, escaped from Germany and came to New York, where they later worked with Oppenheimer on the creation of the A-bomb, not to mention Klaus Fuchs and Gold, the British spy, which we're going to get into in an episode on the Rosenbergs when we get into uh, the brother who rats out the Rosenbergs, as we'll talk about in that episode when we get to that on America's Untold Stories. I look forward to that one, actually. Uh, <clears throat> Mark, uh, Locals Tip. Mark, have you seen the 1980s miniseries Oppenheimer of Sam Waterston? Pretty yes, I have. Yes, I've seen all of these. That's why I'm not in a hurry to go, you know, uh, uh, run to this three hour Oppenheimer festival. You know, if it was James Woods 20 years ago when they started this goddamn project, I'd be more interested in seeing James Woods as Oppenheimer uh, than this Cillian Murphy, yeah, British or Irish cat, whatever Murphy is. I, I'm not sure. I mean, yeah, I totally can see James Woods in that role. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Absolutely. Now, like I said, he's a producer on the film because he brought in some money probably from some source. Well, that and they can't put him in the film because he's persona non grata, right wing guy and blah, blah, blah. So, right. Well, he's um, aged out, you know, which is what happens in a lot of these 25 year projects. Uh, the writer of the book recently passed away also, sadly. Uh, I think he finished the book in 1975. <laughs> You know, and it's been optioned and, and kicked around in multiple scripts, you know, blah, blah, blah. I, I've been through it myself. Uh, Bighorn Shaver said, can't wait. Locals tip. Uh, Otto from Locals. Can't stop staring at my new Buell Wesley Frazier card. And everybody said, Yeah, it's a good before. looking card. Yeah. Um, we'll probably get a letter from his lawyer or something at some point. <laughs> I don't know. It's AI. Can't copyright AI, Supreme Court said. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, tell it to the uh, uh, Screen Actors Guild because they're having a problem with it. You know, well, they, that's they're, why they're fighting. Yeah. Right. But, I mean, Bob Iger, who's the kind of the spokesperson for the studio heads, um, came out and started uh, speaking about it last week. And it looks like they're both sides are digging in just to give you an update on what's going on. This may go on for months. I have a friend of mine who's stuck in Australia uh, down there working on Tropo, Thomas Jane, the Punisher, uh, the strike hit while he was down there. People can't move around now because they don't know if it's going to end, not end. I mean, these these big productions are being put on hold. And, you know, it's, it's almost like a pox on both their houses. You don't know who to root for in this case. It's like, you know, the, the commies versus the Klan in North Carolina. You don't know, <laughs> you don't know who to root for. Uh, the, the studios are saying, look, we want to explore AI and we don't know where this is going to go. And the, the actors and the writers are opposed to AI uh, because they know where it's going to go. And they also want revenue and residuals from streaming services. And it's very hard to come up with a mathematical formula, Eric, for residuals for streaming because nobody knows how many streams there are. They technically can find out how many streams there are. Mm -hmm. There should be a way to do it. They're quite reluctant to do it because they don't well, want to pay any Spotify. money. It's the same boat as Spotify. I mean, the music world has already been gutted, and that that was a symbol to them. But artists, I mean, they'll. No, but sell I'm talking about if thousand. something if something streams on Netflix or one of the many streaming services. Right, right. Think about all the actors that are in that one stream oh, that agree. now have to get a revenue piece. It's mind boggling. Oh, no. And it's not. That's. Uh, no, I totally get it. Uh, I mean, yeah. Spotify shows it down the artists, and an artist there can do a half a million plays, and they get maybe a McDonald's meal. I mean, right. so there there isn't that much money there to carve up either, and they're all dying. Oh, Disney's losing huge know. money on streaming. The, you know, they're all trying to go to streaming to survive. So I don't know. I I, I, I see know. it as a race to the bottom, but it helps us well, out. All I'm because... saying is that both. <laughs> digging in now and, and it could i believe i'm predicting that this is going to lead to the end of hollywood uh, that's my early prediction i think this is going to be the um 
the end of it. This is going to be the the okay. the this you know the stake into their heart. Uh, the, keep in mind, there's no more record industry in Hollywood, so it's right. not really bizarre. People, if I would have told you 15 years ago that the record industry is going to end, which I did, uh, people laughed in my face. Uh, they're gone now. There's just empty buildings on Sunset Boulevard that used to have record labels there, and they're not there anymore. And the people think that it's impossible that, to end the film industry. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Yeah. Nothing's impossible. They have abused this. The, the reason the record industry ended was it was so top-heavy with salaries and executives and people working, milking every single album, as Eric knows, and every single, a single artist, that it just collapsed under its own weight. That's mm -hmm. what's happening here on an even bigger scale. I mean, these films are, you know, uh, collapsing under the fact that there's hundreds and hundreds of executives feeding off of these films at the studio system, you know, who have salaries. And, and not to mention, I watched a film last night, a documentary on the bling ring. I don't know if you remember the bling ring, Eric, when these kids were breaking into celebrity homes to rob them in Hollywood. Uh, they made a film about it, a, a feature film, but I watched a documentary last night. It was like three part documentary, which I recommend mm -hmm. on the real bling ring, the kids that really did it. And they all just wanted to be famous. And the people's homes they were breaking into were just famous for being famous anyway. They, they didn't really have, I mean, it's like, you know, Paris Hilton's home and reality TV's homes. They did hit Orlando Bloom's home. Uh, they got his stuff, but uh, I recommend that documentary. And also, is a three-part documentary I, I recommend uh, on Woodstock 99, which I had mm. reluctantly put off for a long time, but it's great. It really is great. So oh. I recommend that too. Amazing, amazing. Um, let me see. Jennifer Dawson with the super sticker. Thank you very super. much. Uh, the Real Terry uh, super sticker. Thank you. Bob Bennett, your show ranks as my favorite YouTube show. Thanks again for all you do. Thank Thanks, you. Bob. And by the way, you know, the Hollywood strikes, they do help us, Mark. And they help all the people on YouTube and independent creators because we're all fighting for, you know, time. I mean, that's the most valuable asset. Well, eyeballs. In the world. You're fighting for eyeballs and earlobes, you know, to watch and listen to uh, your shows. And I think that if it if they dig in, like you said, it, I forget what it is. It's like um, X amount of time creates a new habit. And we've mm -hmm. already seen things get destroyed by COVID and, and whatever else, where if, if people can't get their new stuff on Netflix, eventually they burn out on the old catalog and they cancel it. They move well, to something I, else. And first of all, this is the first time since 1960 that both guilds have gone on strike simultaneously. Um, and Kennedy was president when this happened uh, the last time. JFK was president in 1960 when this happened. There used to be a head of the Screen Actors Guild named Ronald Reagan, who will become president after JFK uh, is president during this double guild strike. And another oddity that came out of the last strike was the creation of uh, reality TV. That's where mm. reality TV came from, folks, was the last uh, Writers Guild strike. And who knows? Maybe, maybe Eric's right. Maybe the, the, the fundamental viewing habits changed uh, from that mm -hmm. last strike and reality TV became a thing. Uh, out of that, maybe this will become a thing out of this, you know, because uh, like Eric says, viewing habits are not set in stone. They have changed historically over the years. Oh, yeah. And my favorite Hemingway quote is, um, how did you go bankrupt? Slowly at first and then suddenly. Right. I, I mean, who watches those late night comics anymore? Think about, do you know anybody who watches those late night comics? Those viewing habits ended when they went political, all three of them. I mean, everybody in the country, Democrat and Republican, watch Johnny Carson. They watch Jay Leno. They watch Letterman. And, you know, Leno was a right wing wing guy and Letterman obviously on the left, but it didn't matter. It didn't. Mm -hmm. Now it matters. I mean, the viewership is cut in half when you when you do that for these late night talk show hosts, you know, with dancing syringes and shit like that, that Colbert put up uh, and other hijinks by Jimmy Kimmel and the other mutts that are doing this. So those viewing habits clearly changed. As, and I think we don't know what's going to happen, Eric, coming out of the strike. You're right. Yeah, I mean, it's just crazy. Uh, JS, I watched that hearing unreal. Kennedy should consider unreal. running as an independent. But he's uh, not considering it. I, I, thank you thank for the God. donation. He, <laughs> yeah, I know. Thank you. Thank you. Because he's just going to lose and pull from Trump. Uh, I mean, we're going to get into an independent run in 1968 when we talk about um, um, 
the Alabama governor, George Wallace, picking a vice presidential candidate named Curtis Bombsuela May. We're going to get into that in the LeMay episode and see what happens to that campaign in 1968. And he, as an independent, pulled nearly 14 percent of the vote, probably one of the largest independent runs in American political history, uh, modern political history. Anyway, I mean, Wallace pulled about 14 uh, out of that. What did Perot pull? Like nine or? 10? Yeah, it was it below was 10. Good, but it was a it good was chunk. It was a good chunk, but I mean, yeah. I, I obviously, obviously, RFK can change his mind, but he seems so intent on uh, on not running as an independent or not switching parties. I, I have to believe him. That would just be a nightmare. The real Terry wanted to send fifty bucks, but couldn't come up with a fifty dollars question. So, just sending a tithe of what could have been. God bless. It could have been. We could have had a great question out of Terry, but because of financial uh, cutbacks, we don't even get a question. Well, you know, hey. Thank you. Uh, Cindy Belfield. I guess I'm saying that right. I've been binge watching your channel and I just received received Oswald. Thank you very much. I love watching Oswald you. The, the dog? Yeah, received Oswald, the rock star. Proper. Now, what was it? I, I do want to let everybody know that I was advised and I followed that advice and I did not pot, pack Oswald with a ruby. Because that oh, could have been dangerous. Yeah, that's a good move. That's a good move. Keep them apart at all costs. Definitely. Um, Ed Gilchrist, was RFK Jr.'s estranged wife's um, S-word, Harry Carey, nefarious? I think it was nefarious in the, in the in the fact that she quit going to meetings, that she was an alcoholic member of AA, and wow. that she was upset that he was cheating on her. She spiraled into a black hole, uh, depression, suicidal. I think it was a combination yeah, of yeah, yeah, yeah. A combination of, of events <laughs> <laughs> that uh, yeah, Kamikaze, uh, yeah, bad, bad things, bad things, she committed, bad things. She committed kamikaze. Um, shouldn't we be extremely concerned that RFK Jr. is a dangerous loose cannon? To who, though? I mean, I, I'm saying he is a dangerous loose cannon if you're if you're looking to defeat Joe Biden. If, I, look. Mm. I, I know Trump is flawed. I get it. I, I'm not. I, I'm not in love with the guy either. But you have to be really pragmatic, folks. I mean, you know, I don't like this. I don't like that. Good. Go fuck yourself. Now, what are you going to do? Now you got Joe Biden for four more years. I hope you're happy. You know, because I don't have that luxury as an American. I mean, something's got to give here. We got to get behind this guy to defeat this maniac who's in there. If you give this guy four more years and his crew and his cabal that's in that White House, and God knows who the hell they are behind him. Uh, we're in a lot of trouble, folks, because, I mean, the things he's done in the first four years have been so crazy that I, I hate to even think what he would do in the next four years unchecked. I really, it's really terrifying. It really is. I mean, anyone who's not backing his opposition at this point really needs to have their head examined. And, and all you have to say is, are you better off now than you were four years ago? It's a simple question. The guy should run Mr. T should run on a simple campaign platform, simply saying, are you better off now than you were four years ago? Any schmuck who says he's better off now than he was four years ago is obviously some sort of a Marxist revolutionary in with this Biden crew uh, or needs to be in a mental institution because even, even Democrats aren't uh, uh, convinced that they're better off now than they were four years ago. Well, and if you want to know what it looks like, just look at the congressional hearing. Yeah, watch that hearing and you'll see there the future. I mean, yeah. <laughs> that, I mean, that's they, what's they, coming. They, they were grilling this. Who was it? It was one of these guys was grilling uh, Wiley, the, that is a name, um, from the uh, American Civil Liberties Union about censorship. And he simply kept saying, should the government uh, tell the American people what they should or should not uh, watch or, or read? And she would not answer the freaking question. He, he said it over and over and over again, and she wouldn't answer. This is a woman from the ACLU, keep in mind, not some you know revolutionary in the Democratic Party, although it's probably the same thing. She wouldn't answer the question about censorship, and she was there merely uh, to further attack uh, RFK Jr. She, she was sitting on the panel with him. Well, it reminds me of a Supreme Court justice who couldn't answer what a woman was. Right. This is Maya Maya Wiley. Not so Wiley. No, no, no brain trust. I uh, got some locals tips. Uh, bah, bah, bah. 
uh, Big Mike 2 Electric Boogaloo from Grunt 167. Big oh, Mike. okay. Big Mike 2. Like, Big uh, Mike 2. Or somebody with hairy arms. Big Mike. We, we were talking about hairy, hairy arms. Yeah, we're talking about somebody with hairy arms uh, from an island. Right. Go on. Big Mike 2. Electric Boogaloo. Big Mike. Okay. Big Mike is a nickname given to Michelle Obama. Oh, I didn't know. Oh, yeah, I vaguely remember that. Yeah, right. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. Um, Al Alex Stein, when we when we saw him down there, he was going on and on about that. Mm. I don't think. Remember? Mm -hmm. He's uh, going to have a boxing match with somebody, Alex Stein. Uh, I don't know what's yeah. going on, but it's very Kaufman esque what he's into now. Yeah, you definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Pasha yeah. sent uh, a meme of here's Mark on his vacation on the sun, and it's saying rise and set. You've got a lever. Okay. Uh, Alehouse sent a uh, tip. Here's some dollars from Epstein. Uh -huh. um, somebody's saying, how about doing a story on journalist Daniel Pearl? Spook or just in the wrong place? I think uh, both. I think both. Hmm, I agree. Um, Malcolm Palm sent a tip. Just the final words of, of Daniel Pearl, by the way, uh, were I am a Jew. Go on. Oh, really? Before he beheaded, <laughs> yeah. And we know that and we'll never forget it. And he's that was his last words as he as a living member of the human race. That's ugh, so horrible. Um, Malcolm Palm, Democrats today, the DC spirit see that the DC species are pure evil. Totally agree. Um, don't sue me. If you were a US Secretary of State, would you task Turkey with getting the grain? deal back on track after Edragon stabbed Russia in the back, approved Sweden and NATO and buy F-16s? Um, let me think about this. First of all, my take is, and, and this could be the subject of a documentary, what is Turkey doing in NATO? And I've said this for years. I, I don't know what they're doing in NATO and why, not that I support NATO. I'm just saying from a NATO's point of view, there's F-16s in, in Turkey. For Christ's sakes. And when Erdogan went on vacation, they brought that cat out of Pennsylvania and tried to front him in as a Kalabi in Turkey during a, a, another attempt by the CIA to topple another uh, regime, uh, Erdogan, who came back from vacation in time to end the coup d'etat launched by the United States against him with this cat who was living in the woods in the Poconos in Pennsylvania. Um, and that failed. So that's the last time we try to screw with Erdogan. Uh, I think he tightened up the noose. He's kind of a dictator over there anyway. But the question is, what are the, why are they in NATO? Uh, this is not a democracy. And, and Erdogan runs the place as a, as a dictator. And uh, just a question I've had for years. No, no, I don't know about the wheat, I mean, the wheat deal. I mean, to be honest, what Erdogan is doing, he's playing both sides of uh, Russia and, and, and the United States. Oh, I'm sure. Short answer. Short answer. Uh, Dr. Cole 22 said, Today is my birthday and I share it with the late Robin Williams. Any personal mm. or not personal stories about him, Mark? I knew Robin pretty well. Um, what can you say? Um, he was an alcoholic and um, couldn't stay sober and uh, went out, relapsed, and was too embarrassed to come back. So he went to Hazleton. I mean, we're going to do a story on Robin Williams. I don't want to give away the whole thing, but uh, okay. I did know him, and we'll get into it when we do the Robin Williams story. Okay, good. I look forward to that one, too. Uh, your boy, Blue, would you please explain what pragmatism is and why it's important? I'm in full agreement with you, Mark. Well, you kind of have. But... Pragmatism in terms of the election? I mean, I think what so. they yeah, call I the Russians call it real politic. And I'm just, I, I, we don't have the luxury this political cycle to, to just, we got to clear the field as as fast as humanly possible. If you want to have debates, let's have them tomorrow. Let's get it out of the way. Let's whoever these people are running around this Nikki Haley and the fat guy from Jersey and whoever wants it saying that Donald Trump Jr.'s kid, uh, the kid was saying he's on the fence about debates. W whatever they're doing, it's got to be done now. Get this field cleared out today. The faster the field is cleared the faster we can take on Biden, mano a mano. You don't want midget wrestlers running around the ring, waiting for the bell to ring for round one of Ali Frazier. If that makes any more, I can't be any more clear than that. 
All right. Um, J.D. Tippett, what make, year, and model was Ruth Payne's car? Um, I think it was a 57 Chevy station wagon or something. I, forget. I think it was a station it was wagon. Sea green with the, it had a roof rack on it. Uh, it was we a Chevrolet. It, we showed it in, a Chevrolet. The, uh, in our Ruth Payne episode, the first one. We showed the car, um, yeah. the inside of the car. I want to say Bel Air, but I don't know. Um, but the interior of it. It was that short the station wagon they made. She taught... She took uh, Lee Harvey Oswald to the DMV one day. It was closed, so she tried to teach him how to drive in an empty parking lot with that car, um, for what it's worth. Oh, crazy, crazy. Um, and she drove across the country in it a couple of times. She took uh, she took Marine Oswald back from New Orleans in it. All right, we might have to go into a speed round. You guys are super, oh, super lightning generous. round. Let's go on the lightning round. All right. All right. Let's go lightning. Let me see. Uh, uh, DTB, uh, Tom Lake is Mark. What do you think about the red pill movement? Have a wonderful weekend. Mark and Eric sponsored by. Uh, I don't know about JD. Tom Lake. All I know is what I said the other day was about David Horowitz and how he was the original red pilled guy because the black Panthers had killed his secretary and the white members of the um, radical movement at Ramparts magazine uh, said, you got to break a few eggs, you know, to make an omelet uh, to excuse the Panthers for killing his secretary. And David Horowitz switched over to the right after that uh, um, moment in his life, according to David Horowitz. And uh, some people don't have a moment. Sometimes it's a gradation, Eric, right? Like Dave Rubin. Like Dave, and myself, yeah. and myself, yeah. yeah. Uh, Joel like I, said, I mean, I, I voted for Obama twice. You know, I mean, I I, uh, I slowly moved over here, but it picked up speed pretty quickly after that. Yeah, uh, Joel Singh, great to have you guys back live. Thank you very much. Um, CP Clapper, we need a permanent moratorium on new mortgages for houses. I guess I'm not familiar. What does um, that mean? I I, I don't know. Um, Rational Savage, dollar. Thank you. I, I don't know much about the mortgages, so I can't really say. Um, hmm. David no, Clore, uh, my father returned from Germany and was days away from boarding a troop ship for the invasion of Japan. He claimed the firebombing of Japan killed many more than the atom, atom bombs. I, have read that. I think that's true. I think that's true. You know, like I said, Curtis LeMay famously said if the Japanese had won the war, that he would have been tried as a war criminal and executed. That's LeMay saying that. Uh, for the firebombing of Tokyo. Uh, but, I mean, uh, look, war is war. He was a, and we'll get into this in the episode, he was a guy who felt that if you're going to go to war, you take the gloves off and just get it done because the number one thing you're trying to protect in war is loss of your own lives. And yeah. he really believed that. Total and warfare. He said this, total warfare. And that, but the, but the goal was not some macabre, bloodlust it was to end the war faster than humanly possible if you didn't do it that way overwhelming and sa force. save american lives and save right. american lives that that's all he cared about it's all he cared well, about that's why the nukes worked is it was for yeah. so overwhelming that there's there was no recourse nowhere to go with from it uh great right. ghost uh, you should look into the seaford new york poltergeist haunting which occurred in the 50s right i lived in massapequa right next to seaford new york and i'm well aware of that I, I don't know what happened, but I remember I, I lived next to Seaford. So I am slightly aware of that story. All right. Um, Mr. Ray Neal, I thought I was pretty well read on JFK, but never heard of the Lee Enfield on the roof of the TSBD. Yeah. What's the story? Oh, yeah, yeah. We, talked we talked about, about it with that. Vince Palomaro, and yeah. both Vince and I have uh, discussed the footage, uh, the film footage of them bringing the Enfield down from the roof. Now, that being said, Frazier owned a 303 British Enfield that was supposedly seized in his house. He was uh, uh, arrested by Dallas police. He was lie detected twice. He was threatened with the electric chair in Huntsville. He had ammo. He was a marksman. He went to the, the rifle range a lot. Uh, this is Frazier, who claimed he ate lunch in the uh, unusually weird basement of the Texas School Book Depository. Um, he's the one that gets Oswald the job there. Uh, him and his girlfriend come up with the curtain rod story, and you could watch that episode. But um, they did find a 
there was a lot of rifles in that building. So I'm not saying that that was the only rifle, but uh, there was a Mauser, obviously on the sixth floor. And there is the Carcano that they bring out, but there was a 303 British Enfield on the roof. And I believe that this is just my hunch that uh, uh, Frazier was one of the shooters up on the roof. All right, I'm going to go through some rants real quick. I care 22 a 602 said, you're competing with Jimmy Dore live. Watch you later. Great team. Well, have fun. Okay. <laughs> what are you going to do? Uh, no, I, obviously. I don't I, think I'm competing with anybody. I'm just talking about shit. I mean, you could watch this. You don't have to go live to watch this. It's going to be up right. He's going to watch this later. That's oh, I appreciate yeah. it. Um, RGR, RPH, you noted that Clint Hill has changed his story over the years. Could you discuss what he said at the time versus what he has said in the nah, years since? You got to go to Vince's. Go to Vince. He's an expert on that. He, he knows about the Clint Hill contradictions. I mean, I'm just following Vince on his uh, his lead on Clint Hill. I know, I'm not going to get into that. He has, he has altered his story numerous times. Definitely. Um, go for big guy, 9-11. You two should dig into the Fargo... North Dakota terrorist and his planned attack last Friday. Muhammad Bar Barakat shot three FPD cops on his way to Fargo Street Fair. Subject was known to the feds and they dropped ball. There, uh, there okay. seem to be always known to the feds. I mean, there's never been a case where they're not known by the feds. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, uh, Krabby T. Girth. Um, Mark, are you a fan of Sony Terry and Brownie McGee? Not so much, not really so much. I, I I'm more into like electric Chicago blues than that uh, uh, acoustic stuff. I mean, I, he's a good harp player, but it's not really my thing. Uh, Taytone, have you guys seen Sound of Freedom? Shows you who Disney is for shelving it. Hope they go bankrupt. Yeah, I haven't I seen haven't. it yet. Uh, I I'd like to see it. I haven't seen it yet, and I will see it. Yeah, I, I plan to see it um, later. Uh, Jan Schofield or Schnanfeld. Canadian dollars. Thank you very much. Um, would you ever be interested in looking into Molly Ivins or Madeline Murray O'Hare from Harold? Uh, Molly Ivins, not so much, but O'Hare possibly. Um, uh, Molly Ivins, I think, from Texas. O'Hare is from somewhere else. I'm not sure, but I'm interested in O'Hare. Hmm. All right. David Dakins, a new member. Thank you, David. Pasha Moyer. Eric, my mom had Alzheimer's. She responded to music long after she couldn't speak or even eat on her own. Obviously a different part of the brain. Wow. That, That's that, probably true. Wow. Wow. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, James Roy, Cotton I love too. Yeah. I had John Popper not so much. But James Cotton, I, I um, uh, great harp player, James Cotton. Great harp player. Popper was like a technically great harp player, but not so much so. Okay. Well, different style. It's part of a, a, a group called Blues, Blues Traveler. Traveler. Yeah. John Popper, yeah. Um, interesting guy. Michael DePaul, $20. Thank you. Uh, Pablo Papano, a John McCain show. Uh, what do you think? I mean, uh, the songbird of, of Hanoi. Way down I mean, the line. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's a songbird. I mean, I like yeah. my heroes to not get caught, you know. This might, this might be a good one. Uh, David Dakin, right. how about an episode on Agent Julia Childs? You know, it's but funny when uh, uh, there was okay. a show in New York uh, called It's Academic. It's a high school uh, game show. And uh, I was selected as an alternate from my school. So there was two of my other friends were also alternates. They had three guys, and then the three of us were alternates. And we went to the NBC building where they broadcast It's Academic uh, from my high school. We were against another high school. And we didn't have anything to do because we were alternates. So we wandered around the building and we were opening doors and just going in there and making terrorist crazy things we were doing. And we opened up one door. It was Art Fleming, the host of Jeopardy. And we just started messing up his hair while he was getting makeup on. We were just maniacs. We were just total maniacs. And he's going, who are you kids? And we ran out the door with Art Fleming from Jeopardy chasing us down the hall. We went into another door where Julia Childs was chopping up a chicken in front of a live audience and started mocking her voice and imitating her like Dan Aykroyd had done on Saturday Night Live and, uh, and, and a couple of years later. And they started chasing us, NBC security, where we had to finally go back into the room where It's Academic was being broadcast. And that may be a subject for another day. But yeah, I, I interfered with Julia Childs chopping up a chicken. Oh, that is funny. Soltron, yeah. I thought Toots was considered one of the greatest jazz harmonica players. He recorded with Bill Evans and Jaco Pastorius. 
both considered to be among the greatest players at their instruments. Right. I'm just talking about the blues, though. I, I haven't. I, I I don't really. Although I do like Toots and the Maytals, which is a great <laughs> reggae band out of Jamaica. If you want to talk about Toots, I'd rather have Toots and the Maytals than uh, Toots Thielman. All right. Um, did you watch Pat Bet David Skewer Wiener? It was epic. Yeah, we opened with it. As a matter of fact, I a did. little bit of it. Hey, hey, McCord, wake up. Wake up, McCord. Let's go. <laughs> Maybe join late. Uh, Dan Heck with us. I mean, you have to go through that tape, though, to get here, don't you? Or you just jump in, we're live. No, you go, you we're here. live, so then they join oh, at right. this good point. Good point. Uh, CP Clapper, none of us have money because of the mortgage. None of us have money because of the mortgage. I don't the Mortgage understand. rates going up? Is that what he's referring to? I don't know. I'm, I'm, I, I really don't know what don't he's know. saying. Um, is the Hanks movie you're talking about called Greyhound? That was a good movie. I'm saving Private Ryan. No, I'm talking about saving <laughs> Private <laughs> I mean, Ryan. <laughs> Jeez, how many invasions of Normandy are there that Spielberg filmed? Well, that were brilliantly you know, Ed, Ed done. Burns, Ed Burns is a friend of mine who was in Saving Private Ryan. He said um, he he was a film director and actor, Ed Burns. Um, yeah. He did Brothers McMullen, little baby films that he did. But he's in Saving Private Ryan, and um, they get all these ships together. They get the landing of, the, of everybody together, thousands of extras, ships tanks, planes, and Spielberg finally yells, action, and he takes a grenade and he throws it and breaks the lens of the camera. <laughs> oh, Spielberg geez. has a heart attack and they have to go back to one to reset thousands of troops, boats, ships, and airline airplanes because Ed Burns threw the hand grenade right into the lens of the camera for saving, true story. And true of course, story. that's your friend. Yeah, he was well, a great baseball player too, and he was supposed to play Alabama Pitts. When I was trying to make that into a movie, Ed Burns was going to play Alabama Pitts, and we went to Spielberg. Uh -huh. But that's a story for another day. And I took, uh, I did something in Spielberg's bathroom and came out and ran into Spielberg. Uh, but that's a story for another day too. All right. Well, uh, has Mark seen the Spielberg movie? Nineteen. Of course, yeah, John Belushi. Yeah, it's a very funny movie. It's a highly underrated film. Um, well, he died like, right Spielberg. around it, didn't he? What's that? Didn't he die right around that time or very soon? Well, afterwards, yeah. But I, I, I mean, it's it's an underrated film either way, but it's a comedy, and Spielberg doesn't make that many comedies. But All right. Um, Mitchell Lindsay, who is E. Howard Hunt? RFK Jr. has it on his channel indicating he's responsible for JFK. I don't think so. I, I think Hunt was an opportunist. He wanted to be a novelist. His son was a heroin addict. Uh, they had some tapes on his deathbed that the son apparently talked him into doing that he could then sell and make a, a book out of it. The kid who was a, a heroin addict, I don't know if he still is addicted to heroin, but uh, that's Saint Hunt. And I think he might have gone to Trine Day, Eric, our favorite publishing house, uh, with this uh, bubamysis about E. Howard Hunt, which I think is um, made up by Hunt. This is my opinion, whether people like it or not. I just don't believe E. Howard Hunt. So uh, take it or leave it. All right. Uh, Dreadnought Trucking. Breaking news. Rand Paul's Bowling Green office was just torched due to his anti-war vote. Oh, my Ooh. God. It's it's getting insane. It's really getting freaking insane. Wow. Um, I mean, that, wasn't well, he attacked by somebody at some yeah, point physically? Crazy attacked? neighbor. Yeah. That could have been a personal thing, though, because it was an actual neighbor. Personal or not personal. I, I oh, mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. But um, Outlaw Pete with the super sticker, thank you. And then Lisa Franceschi from My Favorite Men. Thank you. Look at that. Wow. That is amazing. Um, Patrick Washburn wants to know, how is that kerosene holding out? Apparently, uh, we haven't had that many interruptions. I think um, the signal You literally broke up when you said apparently. Oh, no, you, no, no. You literally did. Oh, <laughs> so, no. <laughs> Oh, it's too it funny. was working so well. Sparty Matt, congrats on 90K. Any plans for 100K? Totally Stop nitty. asking. No, um, right. what was the biggest difference between when you started the channel and have grown to where we are now? Uh, well, there's remember more we got nuked, chats. Eric. Remember we got <laughs> nuked? Oh, I remember, yeah. Yeah, you know, we had to start over or something. I mean, what? we got nuked, um, started over again the day after Alec Baldwin shot um, a DP. Oh, right. Right. Um, yeah. Um, it, it's uh, honestly, it's just a lot more super chats, a um, lot more. 
activity on locals, but I'd say at the core, it's pretty similar. Yeah, I don't think I we're doing the same thing. Yeah, you know, we do it's free Friday, Tuesday and Friday, Friday, right? We've been doing Tuesday and Friday for a long time. Right, but what difference is that we do free for Friday now versus for a while we are killing ourselves. Oh, trying right. To do right. Two, it was too much. Know, Tuesday, Friday, yeah, Tuesday, much. Friday, subject, subject, subject. Well, I can't that do was, that. Oof, yeah. That was rough. I can't keep up with it. Um, K1 Fate, economists expect severed reception, recession by 24. I can I've, see I've that. I've heard that. Yeah, I've heard that. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Okay, can someone explain the 45 caliber they found in the grass? Handgun shell, correct? I never thought it was a handgun shell. It was picked up by Barrett, the FBI agent, and flown to FBI headquarters on a fighter jet. Uh, uh, Barrett, I, this food, footage of Barrett picking up the the uh, shell or whatever shape it was in. I don't know if it was a 45 or 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 what, uh, but there was a bullet that Barrett picked up and flew to uh, uh, Virginia. I uh, don't know what happened to that bullet, but uh, there is footage of that happening. Hmm. Uh, who is really behind Biden? No. I, I think it's Obama. Obama. To make a long story short, I think it's Obama and his crew. Uh, I think there's very little doubt about that at this time. He's 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 made statements that if he could have a third term, he'd have a schmuck as a front and blah, blah, blah. So I think he talked out of school a little bit there. But he was behind uh, Biden. And I think the Clintons were behind Harris. And that was the deal they made. Um when they signed off this team, um, and I, I think try to stick with it as possible. Um, but as Barnes has pointed out, they're attempting to squeeze Biden into leaving by tightening the noose on him via the sun. And this is not coming from the right; it's coming from the left. And they're trying to squeeze him out so they could replace him with uh, the governor of California. I believe um, in that regard, Newsom would replace him. From what I understand, wow. Uh, Cal Lau Pete, now this this one might be interesting. Would you two American icons do an AUS on that Jim Margaret Sanger, the mother of eugenics? Love the content, yeah, you know? yeah, sure. I, I know that's I would a good mind one. Doing it. That's a good one, yeah. Um, Gary Roy, 50 pounds. Thank you very much. Quietly, quietly dropping big money. No question. He's one of the leaders in the uh, dental analysis of the JFK assassination. Maybe, maybe. Man, we thank him. Michael Hebner's back. The old, uh, the old ball player's son, Michael Hebner. And Alexander Wise wants to give us wisdom. Perot got eighteen point nine percent. Oh wow! I didn't know it was that That's shocking. Wow. Thank you. Wow. I didn't um, know that. That's Mark huge. Geisen or Geisen thoughts on Tucker Carlson taking down Pence and Haley at turning point debate. Hilarious. Well, again, <laughs> you know, like how much more can Tucker do for us for the love of God? I mean, look what this guy has been through. I mean, people just take him for granted. I mean, he's a, he writes his own scripts. He, he, he does this stuff on Twitter. This guy does not need the money as we discussed in the Dick Carlson episode a couple of months ago. Um, Mm -hmm. you got to just say this guy's a god i mean he's a god yeah mad mad props to uh tucker yeah for sure <laughs> that was beautiful the pence especially i know I dreadnought know. trucking well the movie pick might have been wrong but i got mark to laugh and a good story out of it lmao oh uh, 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 which one the movie pick about greyhound uh, saving private yeah with greyhound and it was saving private ryan that you were actually talking about oh right i talked about ed burns yeah ed burns he's a good guy eddie burns his uh, mother and my father both worked at JFK. Mother ran a newsstand at the in the airport at the same time my father was working at JFK airport. Oh wow. That By the way, cool. when Oswald comes back to the US, he lands at an airport that will later be JFK Airport. Irony. <laughs> what was it called? How ironic is that? It's Idlewild and Idlewild uh, will later be JFK. Okay. Um, let me see some tips from locals. Ryan PD 911 is rumbles or locals better for us? Probably locals. I mean, we want to encourage. I mean, locals, you get the locals. document, you get free documents on locals. Well, you get remember. documents. You also can contribute. Part of the reason it's like I your own it. skull and bone society, you could be part of yeah. your own skull and bone society. Yeah. And that's, that's why I picked it forever ago is because it's not all top down. 
everybody can post who is a supporter on there and you could talk to each other and support each other. It's, it makes it a far better thing. It's a community. Mm -hmm. uh, USA Now, I'm confused. Alan Dershowitz said Jew is not a race. I think that's correct. Yeah, we're not a race of people. Yeah. Um, I think that's true. You can ask you can ask Trump's daughter who converted to Jew. Did she convert to a race or to a religion? Right. Um, USA Now, you most likable Mark. Well, what? Well, thank you. I don't know. It's a, it's says, a thank you. It's, Holmes it's says, a thank bear. you. I'm saying yeah. thank you for Mark because Mark's saying what? No, it's a uh, bear hugging another bear um, with hearts coming up. And let me see. It's a, a meme or something? or Yeah, just a cute little card. Mm -hmm. uh, don't Sue Me said, how about Hedy Lamar's role in World War II as an inventor? Amazing that's woman. Hed that's Hedley Lamar. Hedley Lamar. I thought it was Hedy. Hedley. That's a joke from Blazing Saddles. Oh, oh okay. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Is that like the Simpsons joke that they took up later when it's like Brian Seltzer? No, it's Seltzer. No, I think it's Seltzer. I think that's where they got it from. Uh, that's what I, I'm guessing. Yeah. But wow. Okay, so Mark. That's it. Steps. Last call. That's it, right? That's right. Um, wait, bring him you got out. Your dog. You got your dog. Oswald's here. Here. Right. here we go. The real Terry's on track. Is this the last call? Yes. Oh, wait. Here's the, the uh, baseball Negro. player Frank Doc Sykes. Never who was heard involved. of him. He was involved in the Scottsboro Boys trial. He's oh, my wow. grandmother's first cousin. On No, he's not on the list. How was he involved in the Scottsboro Boys trial? I don't know. Uh, I don't know that what team he played on as a Negro League baseball player either, for that matter. But, uh, I mean, very a interesting and a, a cool family connection, though. D definitely. Yeah. So what is Tuesday, Mark? Maybe a QA. and a I don't know. I don't think I can get this okay. done fast enough to uh, do the LeMay thing on Tuesday. We may do it. Have to do a JFK Q and A, which I know. Oh, just how about an overall Q and A? I mean, how about an overall Q and A? Yeah, that's even better. Forget about this. Let's just ask. Let's have a Q and A about anything. Yeah, we've but got I, a lot I, of I episodes out there. Finish. What's that? Yeah. I mean, we got a lot of episodes that like Henry Ford, McKinley, and yeah, you know, we can get yeah you know, free for all. Any, any question? Yeah, you can ask anything. I'm just not. I, I just can't get to Lemay fast enough. No, I, I understand. You're allowed to have a vacation. It, in an undisclosed yeah, I, I location. Hate, I hate taking a vacation. I just feel antsy. I just got to do something. You know. I mean? No, I. I, totally I got this it. boat. I'm taking this boat out on link on the lake. So, but I'm waiting for certain elements to change. But uh, after this, we'll start to get this boat together. It's a little motorboat. Well, meanwhile, a little, fish, a little fishing up in here. Hey, there you go. If you haven't yeah. yet, there's a sign. Mark forgot the bell. Oh yeah, yeah. But, it would help us out. It would help us yeah, out a lot. I didn't bring the bell because I didn't bring the bell, but the sign seems to speak a thousand words. Why can't you subscribe? What is wrong with you? Is it too much to ask to subscribe after all this stuff we give you? Really? I mean, how hard is this? It's free for Christ. Like, <laughs> what, what is, I, I mean, I'm embarrassed to even ask. I mean, the, it, just push the freaking button so we can get to 100,000 to get the the thing that goes on the door, and then we can get some guests that uh, can say, oh, he's got 100,000. It, it does really make a difference. You got to really help us, folks. We can't make a hundred thousand ourselves. And I could tell you that it would help because there are some things in the background going on, and they're just kind of like, yeah, I don't know. You know, talk to us later. Oh, I don't know. And we just kept, keep getting kind of pushed down the line, if you will. And it Look, helps just to subscribe get over that to the goddamn channel already. Forget about what Hungry's <laughs> jibber jabbing about. And just the, push the nice goddamn button. button. Right. Just grab your grandmother. I know she's on life support. Just roll her in where the button is and get her to push the button, too. Come on, Grandma. Let's go. Let's help out Hunley and Grow Bear. Sounds good. And everybody, go be nice to your grandma so you can reward her for subscribing. And we will see you on Tuesday. Wow. Thanks.